The following program is presented by Large Ray's Slow Roast Coffee Sticker Company. Large Ray's Slow Roast Coffee. It's like when you're roasting a guy, but you do it real slow. Oh, hey. Welcome back to the next level of fact or freestyle. <gasps> I got it. Oh, Yo. You, you, I think you are the king of Prussia. Oh, so. Or something. You're not going to. But I probably froze, I bet, huh? You, you did freeze, you freeze of that? for a second That's there. a story behind that. I love that. I rarely drink Diet Coke, but I, my son and I just mowed the back 40, so. I'm a little, a little winded. That's that's a reference from that's a reference from a BMX video. If you can, if we'll see if Todd can figure that one out. If you're you're only a little BMXer, if you know, get on out there and motor back forty. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That was if you're um, a real BMXer. No, I know that's Agro Man. If you're a real BMXer. Yeah. That, yeah. That um, was, I'm yeah. so sick there of you. you. Go. Good for you. <laughs> You live under my roof. You listen by my rules. <laughs> yep. yep. That's the first the time I ever heard. It's Steve Swope. It's Steve Swope saying it. <laughs> Get him out there and mow the, mow the back 40. That The funny thing is that is probably a, a normal term out in Oklahoma. Yeah. You know? Oh, sure. Yo, look at this. Look at this big ignorant, this big ignorant shit stick. You'd not even... When was the last time you smoked a cigar, Joe? Uh, Never? Probably, Big. no, probably 2000, maybe 2001, early 2001. Oh, that's, a, that, that, that's, the, that's the year I quit for the second time. Maybe 1999, because I was um, enjoying myself and when when aren't you i well i was <laughs> then i was i i wasn't you're supposed to fire off immediately much... right now you got to be quicker than that but go ahead it's all about know, time I and know, proceed I <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, i my my timing might be a little bit off but i'm getting back it is it it is. You're you're almost like a slow adult. Like you're not as you're not as quick as you should be with some of your nonsense. You know what I mean? Hey, I gotta get back. I gotta get back into it. I I just took my um, <laughs> little ibuprofen and I'm ba ba Ray. I'm sitting at home in bed with my leg up, and I'm icing this massive bruise on my shin, which is. Me which messed up my timing for the jump and um wait just hold on a second before I'm eating before, protein. before this goes in listen if this is a flat landing injury we're gonna have to end this call right now <laughs> because we're not gonna have enough time for wait it. because listen <laughs> listen no hold on tracer finn cut his tracer finn had his dad cut his finger off in between a race Ooh. and you're laid up in bed Stop. You're laid up in bed with a flatland injury. Tell, listen, I tell listen. Me that. Listen. Let me first make sure that whichever doctor is under whichever, whichever, how do you say that? Whichever doctor is <laughs> under your care or whatever care is under your doctor, whichever way that goes. Yes. Can you please have the doctor <laughs> get the? Make sure they get all the sand out of your pussy before they go and proceed with any more of this stuff because you're laying in bed. With a flat landing injury, dude, I wouldn't listen. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something real, real quick it's, about something about the world. It, it's a hard. I had job. a neighbor. Oh, stop! No, it's oh my god, that's the new shirt. It's a hard trick. <laughs> this is how this is. You maybe you just haven't lived long enough or had a rough enough life. My neighbor across the street 
he was like a 75 year old man and he couldn't lift his arm up kind of like how I can't lift my arm and he said on my on my 60th birthday I went to Colorado and I was doing this like I wanted to do a black diamond ski thing boom and I fell and I wrecked my arm and I was like wow at 60 he's like yeah he's like I had to do it and I'm even though my arm's wrecked I'm glad I did or whatever so then the guy passes away his son moves into the house and I'm talking to him about his parents I'm like man your parents were the best blah blah yeah your dad was telling me how he wrecked his shoulder doing the black diamond whatever and his, his the guy just starts laughing he goes do you know you know how my dad hurt his shoulder I'm like no what yeah, he was doing the Black Diamond in Colorado and, you know, whatever. He goes, my dad was, my dad couldn't sleep at night and he was going downstairs to get a warm glass of milk and missed the step and went flying down the <laughs> steps and broke his shoulder. So, so I want you to use that in your, in your non, in, in your, in your nonsense. <laughs> See, that's a man that knows how to tell a story. So you're laying up. You're you're laying in bed with a flatland in, injury. Okay, you're uh, laying in bed we're with gonna, a flatland injury. We're gonna we're gonna workshop this when we go to Toastmasters in King of Prussia next year. Yeah, tell me what's this consist of? Are you really doing a Toastmasters in King of Prussia, like for real? Like you're so going? You, to, are so you going? So to I'll tell you what it is. I'll, so I'll tell you what it is. Um, so you had, you had said, Hey, Joe, did you ever, are you part of Toastmasters? And I was like, no, da, 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 da. well, somehow it came up again. Like I was riding and I, I, I remember that conversation and I was like, no, this is definitely the right thing to do. And so I'm taking a breather and I call the number for Toastmasters and I leave a message and the guy calls me back real fast. I think his name's Chris, the Toastmaster. <clears throat> And oh no, oh, uh, he he's like, hey, you left a message. This, I, this is not the club that I'm in anymore, but you know I can help you get there because they haven't updated their website. And I go, uh, my friend from King of Prussia told me about Toastmasters, and I googled it, and I'm calling because I want to show up, but I don't know what I'm walking into. And I'm hoping that you can tell me what I'm going to walk into. And he told me about how it all works. They have like a guidebook. They have like a regimented um, <laughs> re like training program. And he, he's like, well, the first one you you show up and you can, you don't even have to talk. You could just sit there and have dinner. He goes, but the next one, you have to tell a story in like eight minutes. I'm like, okay. And then he goes, once you get past that, you get past the, to the next one to the next one. And eventually, like on the third or fourth one, we sit in the, in the back and heckle you. And I'm like, I know just the guy. And that's what you're trained on. You're frozen. <clears throat> hey, are you You're back? frozen too. Is it my, my Wi-Fi that's... Yeah, I don't is, know. Is my Wi-Fi the one that's busted most lately? I can't do this I, in my backyard. I have Starlink. Hold on. I really don't want to move. I have the Tesla of... Oh, wait a second. Let me get onto my Starlink. Hold on. It might... I might go away for a second. Okay. I can so hear I have you, Starlink you but you're frozen. All right. Yeah. It'll it'll as long get as you back can, on. If you can hear me, that's all that I care about. Okay. Am I am I coming in fluently and and steady? It's a. I mean, you've been better when you were in your kitchen, but I want to see you enjoy <laughs> your cigar. Yeah. It's too. Well, like I like I said, I just mowed the back forty. I'm sitting outside. I don't want to go. It's a very warm today in King of Prussia. It's 82 degrees. We're wondering oh when. Oh my the, gosh. We're wondering. Yeah, we're wondering when the um, winter is coming. But anyway, so, um, we got to talk about the Magoo show because it's it's so good. It's shockingly good. It's 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 better. So as soon as I watched it, 
I text Magoo and I said, I'm so glad you did this. This was an absolute gift to me and all my friends because, you know, we needed something like this. And then he wrote back, you know, like, you know, I was really reluctant on doing this. And um, he's like, I did it for you, Gary Pollock, Scott Town, my wife, Chris Muller, and 10 other people. Like, that's basically, but, but he didn't. He did it for, he did, he, he did it for probably 500,000 people because back when we were kids, he was such a big part of this deal. Like, he was our leader. Can you still hear me? Am I still on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I knew back when we were kids, Magoo was a huge part of what we were doing. And he, and when I was a kid, all I could picture and remember was him just helping people nonstop. Like, and I think he was viewed upon from other people as like he was an annoyance, but like even like back then and even now, Magoo was nothing but there to help people, you know? And I think he kind of relayed that in what, what doing his, uh, his interview. But it was oh, it, totally. it was it, it was five hours long, and I, I'm I'm in my second time watching it. No, that was good. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's still good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Chad. Hey, how we going? What's up, you guys? Good. We're we're talking about the Magoo. Hey, interview. Chad. Chad, have you ever had a flatland injury where you had to lay in bed all day? <laughs> I thought he got a massage. That's his in- injury. He got massaged Just too for- hard. For 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 one minute, just be as as honest as possible and real. Did you have you ever had a flatland a flatland injury where you were laid up for however long? I just say a day. I mean, yeah, pro- probably a day. Like I used to fall on my bike and like break ribs and stuff. I mean, so, listen, Evil Knievel jumped Wembley Stadium and goddamn caned his ass up the launch ramp and said, "I'm never jumping again." Right. So no, and no, I've Joe, never done it. No. Yeah. Hey, turn your camera on, Chad. Turn your oh, camera how do on. I do that? You tap tap on the, the screen, screen lightly. Or left at the bottom. Joe, let me do this. I know how to do I, it. Yeah, I think I forgot to configure this with cameras on right away or like that? Well we're almost done. I'm I'm sorry. Sorry, David. Like that? No, that's I can't Okay. You gotta tap it lightly once, boom, and then at the bottom it'll show up. And it'll, now it just shows um, me. Sway uh, no, camera with a red X. Yeah, with the cigarette. I just see you two guys. That's it. No, you know tap me? it again. It. Swipe it. Swipe, you said? No. Tap the screen gently. Tap the screen like there's a bug on it. Go boop. The last video. And in the lower left, there's a thing that has video, and you want to turn your video on. Not exactly there. I don't. Your video is stopped. Yeah. So tap that to make the video start. To speak. There he goes. It, no. That that says microphone is unmuted. Your video is stopped. Right, tap it again, and then tap the video icon, like the video camera icon in the lower left. I don't, I don't see that on my phone. Oh, really? Turn no. it sideways, we, so that you have a longer. Joe, landing. you'd have a better chance of landing. You'd, you'd have a better chance of being on the ground and landing a plane. No, I, from I the just, air I just with somebody. I just directions. see a person and backgrounds. Come on, Chad. Video filters. Chad. You can, Chad. You can do it. There, I'm going to give you a button. Somehow, this is all Joe's fault. He has one flat lane. I'm going to give you a button. That's what I told him on our wedding night. Joe and his flat lane injury. Hey, Chad, did you listen to the Magoo thing? Do you have time in your day to listen to that? Five hours. Yeah, of- I, yeah, I listened to the whole thing. I got a lot to chime in about. Like the black part of it, okay. but I'd, I'd rather yeah. have this working first. I'm gonna X out of the. Oh, wait, hang on. Video. There you go. Tap the screen gently. 
I can't there you go. Help. Booyah. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, now, Chad the Groot. Is that on? Chad the Groot. No, not yet. Nope. I don't see you. Joe, am I still jumbled up or am I working good still? Maybe. You're working great. Chad, Perfect. I sent a thing to ask you to start your video, so it should pop up. That's probably a little more okay. That is perfectly fine. All right. I might need to ask. <laughs> it's just the video. The host is okay. All right. Perfect. Hey. Okay. Okay. So Ray had this question about your flatland injuries, your history of flatland injuries. He said. He said he's had flatland injuries, but not where, he, where his vagina got filled with sand while he was laying in bed. How, do you, how does sand go in the vagina? How, ask is, Joe. It, ask Joe because the doctor's coming to check on the sand in his vagina and his, they, his shin what, his shin blister. Do you use I a shovel? Do you use I a took, shovel for that, or what do you do? I took a I took a peg to the shin and to the knee in two separate ones and uh it even it, it went right through my hammer and it's a big gnarly bruise about this big and i can put weight on it to walk but the real sensitive stuff and like the fast burst um response is not working and so i've got to let this thing rest are you sad and, and heal up i'm a little sad <laughs> that i had to take today off but um I, I the day off of what? What did you take off? I'm not. I'm here to, today. I'm here to fill his sadness with ridicule. So get ready. <laughs> I'm going to do my best too. <laughs> oh, all right. So um, I, I have an unprecedented flatland injury, <laughs> and uh, I'm so far through the Magoo. I'm probably three and a half, four hours. How about he opened it up with the the pooping on Diz's back thing? I can't believe it happened in Philadelphia. That's the craziest part. And he pinpointed when it happened during Live Aid, which is even better. So <laughs> I was I was 13 miles from the poop incident. Maybe that's why Chad channeled me as the pooper. Because hey, no, I was no, so no, close no. James, to it. James did. James okay. did, not Chad. I mean, what do you guys, Chad. What do you guys, was, sorry. What are you guys Chad. most shocked about in the in the, the video? Like uh, that he didn't that he didn't talk about all the shocking stuff. That's what I'm. That's what I'm the, shocked about. Didn't talk about. I'm shocked about. Stuff? Yeah. Oh, dude. Well, I had I had firsthand info from from Gary Pollock. You know, because Gary was on tour with him for a year, and yeah. then I mean I spent a lot of time with him where he just you know, just. Um. But I know like, but what you mean by shocking was I I still did like I thought I knew Magoo like everything he did and he did you know so much stuff that i had no clue about you, you know, know I mean? you know what's like, the most shocking thing though that he's the like, first guy to ever fire bob harrow <laughs> that was great that's one of them i think it's the the details that are so crisp yeah like the the, the time period the numbers you know it's any any storyteller time, knows that date, over time, date, it, time the, color, the story gets age. messed up a little bit. Yep, and he he's got these like yeah. solid story time, and it's well, good he to says detail. everybody's age. Yeah, he, yeah. He gives them their age, where they lived in their age. Like he's a yeah. cop, you know what I mean? He's like, <laughs> like he has it on well, the screen when he pulls them over. Well, that's what he went to school to study. He said that he was an English major and he majored in storytelling. He had a six journalism. foot tall bed. How? But why? <laughs> is, he, is he making a bunkhouse? In his what? Thing? <laughs> <laughs> or he actually or he did that. that. Is he talking about? He's going to teach himself a lesson because when he wakes up in the middle of the night and hits his head on the ceiling, that'll he'll learn. He'll learn. <laughs> Who's he talking? Who's he talking about right now? Is he talking Magoo, about my background? He said he had a no, no, no. no. He said Magoo, Magoo had a six had a foot six tall foot. bed, and he had like oh. twenty one cubic feet underneath. Oh, like the bed, number the six shit. foot tall bed. Yeah, a fucking. Yeah. Bed. He had a party, and he and he like got stuck in his bed, <laughs> and he was crying. <laughs> 
I didn't hear. I didn't get to that part yet. Well, I'll tell you about it then. There, now you know. Okay, do good. Hey, now everybody's on. We did that at um, with uh, at OSU dorms. My roommate and I. That's like my roommate Todd and I did that. That's the original secret couch fort. Uh, yeah, that probably is the original secret couch fort. We just because they they had these extensions you could put on to make it bunk beds, but we were like, what if we just put these things on, but then we don't make it bunk beds, and then we can put our bikes underneath. And that's what we ended up doing. Joe, show me your leg. Um, take the rattle out of your hand and show him. Show him your. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Put down your binky. It's 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 right all up. It's all up here. Uh, I don't. It's pretty juicy all around here. Did I just go for a jog and suck it up, dude? You're fine. Well, I mean, I, like, I of course I'm going to be fine. It's just that uh, I need to give it some rest so that it can be super snappy and responsive the way I need it to for this jump. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to sit. I, <laughs> you get the added bonus of have of having me live from from bed, <laughs> which is you could have kind of dumb. That's not a backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> nice backdrop. Yeah. Good. Um, what about right. Magoo? What, what else? You, so you, you think that that Molar could be the host instead of um, super sarcastic and condescending and um, non-business fudger? <laughs> I think that. I mean, it's pretty evident that Chris Moeller now owns that podcast. Just watching the dynamics, he owns his own media. And they were talking about, like, every brand now has to be its own media company. And I, I, I think it's, uh, it's happened. It's, it is evident that it's happened. It's whatever you think into that chair. Good. Maybe, maybe we all need that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think that's exactly what's needed. So, how many bikes are being sold in in BMX? You asking me? You, yeah, you don't have to tell me your numbers, but what numbers? How many bikes are being sold every year in BMX, or or how, how many like, were sold last year? Like sold or panic sold? Twenty inch. Oh. uh we should go from retail, not sold into distribution. How many are sold? I have no idea. That's that's a. I I could tell you how many through this shop, but I I couldn't tell you. You know how many BMX mm -hmm. shops are there in the U.S. Right. I don't. I, I mean, fixed I it, Joe. Use. <laughs> Joe, I fixed it. I fixed it. Thanks. What did you What did you fix? I you took. Fixed his I leg? took my watch. I took. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, that like no, the only person that could fix Joe's leg right now is if you go to like build a bear and they like put it back together for him. <laughs> I took <laughs> I took my Wi-Fi <laughs> off. That's the trick. Yeah. But Joe yeah. didn't think of that, Mr. Technology. You should have told me. It's take your Wi-Fi off. And, and... I'm slow, man. I'm slow. I'm slow yeah. today. I, I'm I got to be on the recovery. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so we got to talk. We got to talk about pivoting large race slow roast coffee into large race slow roast coffee sticker company because i think, I think I this think, is way better than trying to find the best coffee in the I world think the, i think the, i think the coffee business has sailed dude i think the coffee business has sailed i think it's over don't 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 yeah. look, give me that look you just want to huh? put stickers on everything you just want to put stickers on coffee no one's going to do that yeah what do you mean? Uh, big big bike Isaac <laughs> just sent me a he just sent me a huge order. He's all about putting stickers on his. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like oh. a huge order. You you would not right, a up. huge order. He uh, wants he gonna do many with the of them. Is he he's gonna put them on all coffee? Like walk to the grocery store and just put them on the coffee and walk away. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's gonna put. A, he's gonna. He's gonna go into. <laughs> from what I understand, he's gonna go into Walmart and he's gonna yeah. go find Roth Rock <laughs> coffee and he's gonna put large I, race slow roast coffee what, sticker what, on Roth Rock in Walmart. Well, won't, won't he go to jail for that though? I, yeah, not I, jail. I think what he's here's what I think he's going to do. I think he's going to do it, take a picture, and then go and buy that coffee because it's like when you get a like back in the day when you would uh, I think it's go buy that. bananas and then the guy would put the sticker on like how much how many bananas you bought like how right. much weight then you could just eat the bananas between the scale guy and the checkout guy. Yeah. Okay. I think it's what gonna do do with, I think he's gonna do what would it like you do that. with the peel? What would you do with the peel? It'd be easier to do that with grapes. There's no evidence with grapes. It would be way easier to do it with grapes. My mom yeah. used to do it. My mom used to feed me bananas in the in the grocery store. And feed then bananas. I don't know which I don't know what she would do with the peel. But um, it only worked if you weighed it first. Yeah. You can't do that now. You can do it like Angie does it with coconut water. Swear to God, it just happens to be coconut water. She'll just be walking around the grocery store drinking coconut water, and then she'll just take a yeah, just, almost just like, empty coconut water bottle and self check it out, or she'll throw it up on the. But that's not paid thing. by the weight, though. That's just paid by the scan code. Right. You can you can get you can get away with it like that. So we, she's we she's know down, all the little. Angie's down with the lukewarm. Uh, coconut water then she would know and she's down with the luke lukewarm coconut water 100 percent yeah it's really? awesome 100 percent chad's giving the thumbs up for something yeah people like to hear about warm coconut water you know that keep luke in warm <laughs> that luke yeah. well hold on do you know the reference no great ray, ray tell him the reference i'm, I'm going to tell I the reference I no, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him. I had the I had the biggest moment in my life, where biggest moment in his life. I love to I love to kid around that I was um in the plywood hoods because um it 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 makes me feel good being someone who only ever did eight flatland tricks in their entire life. Um, I always like to say that I was in the plywood hoods because I was with them from the almost beginning. And we were at Joe's, what's it called? A coronation. We were at Joe's coronation. coronation. Mm -hmm. And the same day that Joe got the plaque um, where he was anointed a plywood hood, Joe was sitting next to me and I was talking to, to Kevin Jones. And I, and I was like jokingly going like, Kevin, I'm like a plywood hood, right? Like, like when did I become a plywood hood? Like I was a plywood hood and, and then we were talking about the Rockville show. And I said, wait a minute, if I did a show at Rockville and did actual tricks in the show and announced like I'm a plywood hood. And he goes, yeah, he goes, you're t like, without even like knowing we were like on a bit of a kidding around thing. He goes, well, you're definitely a plywood hood. You did the show in place of me. He goes, I wasn't at that show. And I'm like, you weren't. He goes, no, he goes, I was on Skyway and you were my, you technically were my, um, were my backup. And I was like, so wait a minute. So, yeah. So, like, right there in the world of actual BMX, that puts me in the plywood hoods. And mm -hmm. I turn and Dave, Vol Dave Volker, Dave, Dave Nori was right there <laughs> while it was going on. And I'm like, dude, like, Joe and I were looking at each other like, holy shit. Kevin yeah. Jones just told me yeah. and basically, like, told me right now something I didn't know. I... I'm in. I I am a plywood hood. It was like oh he's always God. been a plywood hood. I've always been a plywood hood. And then I go, Dave, are you hearing this story? And he goes, Yeah, that's great. Right here, you want a coconut water? And he gave me this lukewarm coconut water and a tangerine and walked away. And <laughs> just like biggest, that. Like Joe and I were looking at each other, like we just saw a spaceship land. And Dave handed me a lukewarm coconut water and was just on to the next person he could do a gumby for. But you know, you know what? I Dave, was I was so excited. Yeah, you know what Dave did though, right? At that moment, what did he do? He gave you something. Like one of it's like he gave you permission to be a plywood hood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Through, yeah. yeah. <laughs> through coconut water. That was my that was my gift. Yeah, that's <laughs> Dave. 
Dave's awesome. So whenever something goes down, like whenever we're making fun of Dave and he's real excited about something, I'm like, this is as good as getting a coconut, a lukewarm <laughs> coconut water. Does, does he know what that reference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally because we, we, we confronted him with it and we're like, you have to be more supportive of your friends because that yeah. was a really wonderful moment and it deserves to be celebrated. And, you know, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Mr. And B's. just to let you know, oh, he left. Just to let you know, too, in that show where I covered for Jones, I nailed the rock walk and tail whip. I did a double, a doubles routine with lung mustard. We did, we did in sync, unpracticed rock walks. I mean, that's, you probably can't do a rock walk right now, Joe. Uh, I can do a rock walk. I can do a rock walk. <laughs> At speed, you can do a rock walk. Uh, the, I, so I don't know about speed brakeless. I haven't. Well, I, I should. Oh, I yeah. Try. There's no brakes. There's no brakes. There's no brakes. That's what I was yelling at Andy Pandemic for. He kept doing the. He kept oh, doing yeah. the, like yeah. my rock walks were at speed because I knew no better, and um, <laughs> I needed the momentum to get my body around. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I needed to do it fast. Yeah, but um, um. I'm trying to think if there's any other point on the Magoo thing that was like crazy, it's like something like I didn't really know that was, um, dude. When he, oh, did you did you he, notice that when he said fulcrum, he yeah. bumped the microphone and activated the fulcrum? What's yeah. a fulcrum mean? Uh, it's the part of the bike where, um, like when you do, you have a what is it longer back end on the twenty sixes. And that puts your body closer to the fulcrum, which is like I think where the hub is. Yeah, and uh, cool. just when he said they're talking about geometry, and then just when he said fulcrum, he hit the microphone and it wobbled around. The wobbled. <laughs> I love the part when he was talking about when he goes just the way he says it, and he means it a hundred percent, and there's no apologizing for it. But when he's describing Bob Haro back in the day, and he means zero disrespect because he knows what Bob Haro did for for the sport. And but mm -hmm. he goes, ah, you know, he goes, but when Bob's out there, you know, and he would go to the ABA grands because they had money, he'd go out there for a half an hour and do the, <laughs> get th get three hundred dollars for the for that kick turn bullshit. That cracks me up. <laughs> Like, to me, to me, that is the Magoo <laughs> that I think of when I think of Magoo. Him <laughs> saying a line like that is what my childhood was of growing up listening to him talk. Going out there, Ray, and doing that goddamn kick turn bullshit. Like, it's just so funny, <laughs> man. I, I was surprised on some of the stuff like Moeller, like, hey, I had a beer bottle up my ass and I ended up drinking yeah. it. And um, uh, and then just to straight up call out Corey Nastasio nasty, you know, correctly pronounce it over and over again about uh, get punched in the face, stop banging my wife from a strip club. Like they're just yeah. throwing under the bus. Yeah. Like yeah. So you want to hear a wild Magoo? Um, yeah. You guys know Mark Hilson, and the first time Magoo <laughs> and walked up to Mark Hilson. Instead of shaking hands, Hilson pulled down his pants and pulled out his, his dick, and Magoo walked up and shook his dick, like a handshake. Yeah, that's something Magoo would – Magoo would not – you can't <laughs> phase Magoo. Magoo would never look at something and go, ew, ew, stop, get it out of here. He, he goes right to it. Yeah, he, he, he jumped at the chance of like, hey, why shake hands when I can, you know, do, do something which two guys usually take a little while longer to do. But uh, yeah, he, he didn't have time to mess around. So no, well, like Magoo said in the first <laughs> five minutes of that, he goes, "I was putting, I was putting <laughs> umbrella handles up my ass for pocket change," and that, yeah. and that's a, and that is a reference to Mike Buff used to pay those guys money to do stupid stuff. What you know, mean? like he'd be like, he'd be like, "Hey, Seppi, lick Diz's taint for." you know twenty dollars like <laughs> just like stuff like that put it this way when Ga when gary when gary came back from tour when he was 15 we were like 
what like, happened to you, dude? Like, what is like, what is going on? Where like Gary is a different like. Gary had reverse shell shock. Like he was shell shocked, but in a different way. He was like Gary. Like, Poor dude. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't send my son at age twenty out on tour with Diz and Seppi and Magoo. And Gary's parents were like, Gary was fourteen. They're like, okay, bye, Gary. <laughs> yeah, but you don't. <laughs> you, you don't know. I mean, it's tour life too, so it's like. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like, if you're on the road, you get a little stir crazy, and then then what? You, you make up your own entertainment. Yeah. And some some of it's harmless, some of it's harmful, and some of it comes back on you thirty, forty years later. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, I think the. I I think probably the worst extreme thing that we did on Lollapalooza was I was under this illusion that um, we were just going to be covering carrying so much cash and that I needed some type of self-defense and so we bought um, these giant cans of pepper spray and stun guns and uh, the guy at the gun store who sold them to us he's like and they also have this other like flash and he kind of like looked down and like oh you know like, oh it, it, it kind of got me so we're like, wow, we're getting the good military grade stuff. So um, we go out, uh, my buddy Billy, um, he had a brother in George, Washington State. And we, we get out of the, the van and I look at the guys and I says, look, look, if this really goes down, we got to know that these stun guns are really going to do the job because the last thing you want to do is hit a guy with a stun gun and, and you find work. out that it's like some, you know, some Walmart stun gun. And I was like, but we what went hospital? to like a proper gun shop. I mean, what hospital like... does this story end? And <sighs> yeah. this is right. Out I of... wish I, I I wish it ended in a in a hospital. So uh -oh. the three of us are standing around. And I said one I... of us is going to have to shock the other one. Back yeah. with all... And we yeah. played rock paper scissors. Uh, and, oh boy! And and I turned out to be the one to get it. You know, Perfect. Um, yeah, I said, "Well, where do you want it?" Because the guy said you got to hit him under the arm, in the neck, or in the groin. And I was like, "Oh, under, under the, the arm. arm, yeah, under the arm." And my buddy ran at me and like stuck it like right up under my arm. And I was like, "We paid too much for these fucking things." Screwed like that table. So they didn't do nothing. No, they didn't do anything. And so we were like, what are we going to do with these stun guns? And so what we ended up doing is like one of us would go to get um, lunch or go to the go to the restroom and then we'd sneak back and come in under the, under the cloth and start shocking one another with it. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Oh, uh, what happened? Joe, you froze up. But that was, but that was like, but that was the worst thing. That was like the most extreme thing that we did. And the guys, um, the other guys on tour got to know us as the stun gun crew because they would see us screwing around stun gun and one another. Like there was this one time, uh, we, we had a guy on the crew. He was, he was nice. He was kind of dopey, but there was this really hot girl who was into him. And they were like talking and were like, dude, you're actually here to sell shrimp rocks, not to flirt with girls that you're never going to yeah. see again. But, yeah. but he didn't know anything because his girlfriend, his Israeli girlfriend was still at home in Columbus. And I don't know why. Um, well, yeah, well, I just don't know why he would flirt with these girls. But, you know, he figured he would. And so whenever he would be flirting with girls, we would stun gun him. Well, we actually got hit a lot. Oh, yeah, like all the time. But that was the thing. We were always looking over our shoulders, being very vigilant. But he would drop his guard the minute some pretty hippie walked up. And we knew. Yeah. And we would like, if we hadn't hit him in a, in a couple of days or in a couple of hours, we'd call his attention. We had this game called like, like uh -oh. we set where 12 o'clock was. And we were like, oh, you're going to Cleveland at 3 o'clock, which means some girl with cleavage is at 3 o'clock. Oh my! Goodness. And so we'd talk in code, and we would we would uh, 
we would bump one another and try to get him to go flirt with the girl so that he let his guard down so that we could stun gun him. And he would jump and the girl would walk away. Is this Joe cracking himself up? Do you crack yourself yeah. up like this during the day? Like you're just uh, sitting sometimes, around? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Waiting for your yeah. waiting for your bruise to heal and you're just cracking up. Just certain, waiting for my bruise to heal. Certain thoughts come into your head and you just break out into your your grunt laugh. That's the first test. If I if I laugh, then maybe it's good material yeah. and I can Have you ever when you were doing all the stun gunning, did you ever try the neck or groin? Because maybe the maybe like the armpit was the most um mellow of all like you know what i mean like what do you put it right in their crotch and did it i mean if you get we pun- would... if you got punched in the armpit it wouldn't hurt but if you got punched in the nuts it'd kill you know like you know right I mean? between like your where your butt connects to your leg so yeah. like we would we would do that or uh, yeah, uh, yeah like we we would do that and like if somebody was wearing like like billy would always wear these you, you, you remember jam, jams I have a photo of me that I have a photo of me rocking them in that that Rick Moliterno picture, right at the okay. by the Dan Up show. I am wearing jams in that photo. Well, Billy would wear these hippie jams all the time, and they, they were very very thin, and so we'd get them in the yeah we'd, we'd get them there. Yeah, jams right. are paper thin. So we did got Todd, other stuff. We got to. Is talk Todd about. gonna? Is Todd, did Todd get a doctor's note for not being here today? Um, I don't think that he did. I think he's doing. He might... No, the camera. The camera. Put it. Put it higher. All right. So let's get back to the Magoo interview because yeah. that's that's why we're that's why we're here. Um, Chad, when did, Chad, when did you listen to it? Two two days ago. I think. Did you listen to it all the way through, or did you like break it up into little bits? Yeah, you know, it was the most surprising thing is um, I had it on and I didn't realize I was like three and a half hours into it, and I look over, I'm like, how long is this thing? Um, I mean, I was open, but it was a it was a real slow day. Um, I think probably two stints, and and I might have missed like probably a total like twenty minutes by answering the phone or doing some other stuff, but. Yeah, um, so it's it's a good, flowing, just sit down, listen, all the way through because it's just so enga- like engaging of uh, I don't know, it's just the the interest side of it, and what's wild about a lot of it too is I was around for a lot of that stuff, the tail end of the POW house to the, you know, being on Schwinn to uh magoo the handshake with hilson well that wasn't in there um you know to, to other stuff it was like it's so crazy of like our time period and relate to a, a lot of different stuff but hearing all the back end stuff about businesses where i really like my my ears were you know open so it was pretty pretty good shit so i think so the story about um it was Richard from GT telling Magoo that, you know, all you do is cost me money. Yeah. And that when they got, when Magoo finally, when, when he quit and he says, here, just write down a, a number. And like, him, like Moeller was doing that, that motion in the lead up to the story. And I just, I laughed so hard imagining them pushing the piece the of paper, paper back, back and, forth. and forth on the desk, <laughs> like you write a number, you write a number, you write a number, you write a number. It's so good. It's so a full. Good. It's a full on like Larry David skit, you know. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I, I thought of Larry David part, in parts of that, whether it's, um, Magoo talking or Moeller. There's there's some like mannerisms of like, it's like Fudge or shut up. We're talking. <laughs> You know, yes. like, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like if you're not contributing and you're rolling your eyes or you're doing your goofy laugh or, you know, blah, blah, blah like, you know, Larry, Larry David, I thought it was like a different show 
a few different times. If I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, it, no, it's dude, all funny. different. Like this, it's all, it's all part different. of it is, is they don't know the, the art of like the release of the story and the, the details of, you don't have to draw stories out. You can just hit them with like a punch right away. And it seems like they're, they're so good at that. That's why people like them. But I don't know. I was, I just, I'm impressed of like the delivery, like how they kind of feed off each other and stuff, you know? So it's pretty wild. Did they, did they plan that? Like, is this, did we just witness the takeover of the unclicked podcast? Like, uh, is it now, it, it, has Magoo subverted uh, no, the liberal Magoo's elite not, global BMX? Media? Magoo ain't doing another one of these things. No. Maybe when he's 75, he'll do another one. But the is he the creative director behind the scenes? No, he's no, 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 no. For that. Like, like when he's there and they're they're going to lunch after that and drinking water or stuff like that, he'll discuss it. But he's but he's not gonna like, he he's not gonna do that again. Like he's legit look clueless about Nastasio that he has his own bike or he's on fit or this is doing that or bmx industry it's like he looked really legit he he didn't know and i i, I want to believe so he thinks craig grasso died you see where he goes craig grasso died in a yeah. dumpster in san francisco yeah i'm not he's grasso's still alive yeah, yeah. but that's yeah. Just, that's just kind of funny stuff to stir shit up and you know yeah. it's, not, it's not like he's gonna watch it he's hoping that people like us find entertainment in it and i think oh, he yeah. excelled at it he, he he did a great job of keeping you know the 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 one hour podcast in a five hour form <laughs> like or, or, you know I mean, a five hour podcast yeah. in a one hour form or feeling so I, I and that that's good shit you know I, if you know you're at a concert and it's a three hour concert you might have to pee once or twice um <laughs> it, his was I, I don't think you need to because i found myself like leaning into the tv and that that means you're engaged and stuff so it's like it, it was it was great but it's it's kind of cool hearing some older stuff the only thing i was a little thrown off by and i don't know if you guys have read it is a graystoke magazine and i think they got down a wormhole where they're bashing it and then moeller tried to get out of it so that's maybe the new post technique of you know being able to get in, into that magazine again and not completely bash him so you know you he, he didn't montana ricky you know like um <laughs> i was i was watching that stuff. today because i wanted to catch it before uh -huh. you know, i want i wanted to know if something got said that would get it taken off the air uh did, did you notice there's a few edits in it though like there, there's a few there's a few spots i i think i counted three of them where the, oh. there's stuff that got clipped, you know. Oh. But, but there probably but yeah, would have to be stuff that there's got to be something in there that he said that they had to get get rid of. I'm sure. But what? Like, let's cover the bases. They're talking about banging strippers to beer bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beer. Like, at, at what point using the c word to what would be cut out of there? That's that's the interesting part. But and and you know. You guys doing, I've never edited a podcast like this, but imagine going back and listening to five hours to make sure that no. you, you're going to cut it out. So you did five hours. You're probably doing another five hours to go through it once, probably another five hours or. Well, what, what? I do is I take notes on like timestamp and I generally like, okay. I, I will write down like a summary as I go so I can tell like the chronology of it um but usually i'll watch it in 2x speed yeah but that you can't is... you can't watch magoo's thing in 2x you know that he talks so fast that if you oh, hit the, if you hit yeah. the button it go he talks too fast for that which is crazy oh that's so funny so fun yeah, just so had to listen to all five hours of it yeah because when i went back the second oh. time was listening to it i'm like oh wait all right i, I know what's going on in this part and i hit the button and I was like, "Oh my God, you can't pick up what he's saying." He, <laughs> if, you, if you watch it, he's he's one speed. Magoo's this is a, this is a ten-hour podcast. It's a ten-hour podcast, actually. What it, you know, it'd be cool is to do either a survey or some some kind of stats on it. Because like, I have a shop that's open 
six hours a day and a five hour podcast, I could have it on the background. Yep. Um, and that's what I do. There's a lot of white noise and I, I have that. So it's easy. Me at home, I don't think I could sit there and do that and uh, go through it all in one one session. So that's that's where I'm okay with because I got a, a TV that's on. There's people and it's just keeping the sensory going in the shop, you know, so conversation, Chad, well, not. Chad, would you ever play one of those podcasts like on the shop TV? I did. That's what I, that's what I played. I played it. Well, that's what, that. was that the first time you did it? Yeah. I've only watched it once. Yeah. Would you, would you ever run a conversation podcast in your shop all the time? I do most days. What's what's crazy about I don't I don't know how it works with um, our BMX or Fudger, but everything I play like I'll play I don't know how many hours of stuff on TV, and then it always goes to our BMX up one of the podcasts on on YouTube. It always goes there, so whatever they did, it it goes to something like and I saw Pova, so I, I listened to Pova's, which was a super interesting one. I loved uh, his. Yeah, and, and, and I te- I actually texted him last night, so not to jump podcasts, but like <laughs> I've got I've got two memories of Pova that are crazy because I mean in his thing he's with like John Ritter, you know, and then it's it's like I I was there just before he got on did the Schwinn thing, and I was like kind of blown away, but um, one year at Nora Cup. They had like a highlight video, not highlight, like a low light video of everybody that passed away that year. And there's one year where like six riders died. And as and I I didn't know what to do. And I look over and Poe was crying. And I look at him, I go, that's a fucking real man crying. I could do that yeah. too. And I was like, and then my second crazy memory of Poe is we're in Appleton, Wisconsin at Halloween. And we go out pumpkin smashing. So what we do is you go to house to house to house and we smash everybody's pumpkins and the cops show up and they're, they're like, well, how old you were doing? you? What was that? 30. How old were you when you were 35? He, he was, I was probably a little over 30, something like that, which is part of the story. Um, yep. so be a great John, name for a band. Yeah. John, John Heaton, all the smart people like booked it and Pova and I s- sat there and talked to the police and they're like, how old are you? And we're just like, well, he's older than me. And they're like, well, you're still old for this shit, kind of shit. And so <laughs> I, I was like, basically, like, how do you know that we did it? And they're like, look down the street. And it was just, it looked like like a mess. It was just like every pumpkin <laughs> in the whole neighborhood was smacked. There was not one that wasn't. Like, you couldn't drive a car down the road without, You were like, thorough. It was, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was an adult. Yeah. So we, we got we got pumpkins. we got tickets. They were a little over a hundred bucks, him and I, and uh, we didn't get That's a court appearance or anything. And uh, and it was funny because Pova looks at the at the police officer and says, "Hey, you you're like pretty Republican, huh?" And uh, and the guy's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You voted for Bush, huh?" And the, it was like the end of the conversation. He handed us our tickets and left. And I was like, "There's so much to that." Of our age, the question of a cop, because, you know, they usually more Republican than anything, statistically, I believe, argue me. And uh, but it was with Pova and I texted him last night and it was it was kind of funny. And it was like, good hearing from me. I'm like, dude, we don't talk enough and good shit. And your podcast was awesome. So it was cool shit. So, yeah, his his podcast for me was great because I've seen him a bunch of times, and yeah. I don't think I've ever spoke to him. Like the times I've been places where he was, he was like real quiet, and I always thought I always thought he was like just like a like a jerk off. Like I was yeah. like this dude's an asshole because he doesn't talk. And I've seen <laughs> yeah. people like talk to him and go, "What are you so salty for? What are you so angry for?" He just go, eh. and then when I watch the, when I watch the podcast. I'm like, dude, this this dude's one of the nicest dudes in the world. I'm like, I can't believe I've never like met up with him and talked to him. Like, he seemed like such a great guy. But the when I'd see him out like at Woodward or something, I'd just be like, this guy's angry as fuck. I I didn't even know he was English. 
that's how little I knew about him when he was talking. Oh, I'm like, I didn't know he's. I thought he. I thought he was from California. Yeah. yeah. So. That's why. Yeah, I, 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 I had, I think, probably a tainted yeah. um, to be a part understanding of, of him. I was biased to him there just before I kind of okay. – Do I, really, I, I don't know him, but well, yeah. let me tell you the story. It's Somebody a, told me that he bullied out them out of BMX. Yeah. And then, uh, the, the he bullied somebody out of BMX? That's what yeah. I was told. I was yeah. told that John Pova bullied yeah. – Blah blah blah. Out which of, part of Cal- which part of California? BMX. Um, and I'm, and and now I find it very yeah. hard to believe. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, I don't think so. There, there, he seemed yeah. like he'd be right. too nice to do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know. I know. Like, oh, we I know. That's what's so yeah. weird. So yeah. how? Yeah. What is gotcha. going through the head of the person that's who told that? And and, no. and this yeah. person that's, told uh, me probably got to have to sleep. Was it James McGraw? No, no lies about people. James yeah. McGraw makes up stories yeah. about people. Like we can even maybe, I, uh, I know. I know. He gets them confused. Uh, Scotty Kramer, I don't know if he has no, a he, he probably does. I don't, he, since can, he moved out of here. Ch- can, can he get I'm Chad to turn his me. mic up a little bit? Yeah. 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 What's that? All I want to do is, all I want to do is uh, laugh and drink orange soda with you, Ray. <laughs> Yeah, the, those two little kids, man, is the greatest video ever where they're just pissing their pants laughing. <laughs> so I was telling my sister-in-law about the um, Toastmasters and how I'm going to go out to King of Prussia to do the Toastmasters and we're going to, uh, you and I are going to tell a story or you'll be the one to say, He's going to skip, he's going to skip five grades and I'm going to heckle him right now. Cause that's what they do is at, when, once you've gone to like five of your stage performances, then you deal yeah. with hecklers. But I deal with hecklers like all the time. Oh, well. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I'm telling her this it and uh, she goes, well, I didn't um, know. are you going to, you they don't have them here you have to go i'm like no no they have them here but but raising king of prussia yeah everything go, should be in king of prussia i go the other the other day he goes joe you need to come out to king of prussia <laughs> for for a weekend and we'll be like 12 year olds with credit cards and yeah. we'll make a couch for it and we'll go get orange soda and yeah. she's like what sorry about that no, that's good. Who are those dudes? Um, this one guy, Adrian, he broke his neck and he was we haven't seen him in like a year. And uh he's got mobility with his arms and his upper half. And um he saw me make a super shitty video on purpose in my shop and he was like embarrassed for me. So he came in with this whole crew and they filmed uh the shop and he just like he he doesn't He's just a super legit dude that I used to ride with, and he's in a wheelchair for life. And uh, oh, he wants to just film and do shit. And so they just been here the last couple hours listening to us talk shit. And like, um, but they're that's like awesome. Lo- local. So homies, you're getting like you're you know. getting help. You're so you're so busted up, Chad, that you're getting help from a guy in a wheelchair to make your life yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Is, that's pretty cool, though, right? That's yeah, not that's, that's really cool. super cool. Now yeah. that's super cool. That's yeah, so super I, cool. The it's it's wild because it goes in spurts, but the these kids are I call them kids. They're they're old enough, but they're like they're coming in. And they're like motivated to do shit and like he that Adrian Good. took his fucking wheelchair from a couple miles away and rode it here. No way. Yeah, and, that's and, and awesome. Look, and, and look at the front door. This isn't like handicapped. Like it's a. It's a step. 
Yeah. Like he legit got up. Yeah. There. The, so his, his friends brought a board, a, a piece of two by four, and then found a yep. rock in the field to make a wedge. And he said he was frightened coming in and out because it was like riding like a small little quarter pipe coming into my shop. And I'm yeah. like, dude didn't complain for one second. And I'm like, Oh, and he's cracking fucking jokes. Like, uh, this girl like threw a football and hit his legs, and she goes, "Ouch!" Or he he said, "Ouch!" And she's Ouch. like, "Oh!" And it's like, "Duh!" I can't feel those, you know. <laughs> it's like so, Joe. The, Joe, there's a guy. There's a guy that's paralyzed today, doing more than you. Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, all right. didn't mean it like that, but that's a good like, segue right there. Yeah. All right. Well, I gotta. Hey, you know what? This is this is I. This is what I count on you guys for is to keep me in line when i think oh yeah. it's time to rest i gotta rest yeah angie's angie's going to a class and she's taking the the jeep so now i gotta get around in a in an uber i'm like are you seriously taking the jeep so that i don't do anything this weekend except for rest and she says i'm seriously taking you guys the jeep. wait you guys only have you guys only have one yeah. car yeah we only have one car what kind of house poor fool are you that you only have one car <laughs> You know what? I'll tell you why. We uh we had we had two Jeeps and uh we only ever drew, drove one. Joe. Joe, I'm not going to talk to you again until you get a second vehicle. You got to have a second vehicle. No way. Yeah. I'm, now I'm hooked on it. It's so much Joe, fun. No. I'm not even kidding. Joe, it's so I, much fun. I have two vehicles for myself. <laughs> That's fine. I used to have I like I used to I used to live live by myself and have I had four four cars. Here here's the other did. one. You got to keep it real. There you go. Look at oh, that hoofy. That's gorgeous. What is that? That is thing? gorgeous, man. Is that a Chad Scott, dude. That's dude. Hey, do you Chad? Hey, you don't know Chad. about me and station wagons, man. I love station Ch- wagons. What is that? Hey, yeah, uh, he he catches ghosts in it. Stop talking, Chad. What what kind of car is that? A VW Squareback Type Three. It's a 1971 with luggage rack. Dude, Dude. I'll give you 500 for it, cash. This is gorgeous. <laughs> 500 <laughs> cash. I said. Oh yeah. Oh cash. You, you, I didn't you, know you said cash. Yeah, you could build. You could build a wheelchair ramp in the front. <laughs> no, so, no, so, so, so Joe can visit <laughs> moldy plywood and a rock. So Joe's Uber can drop them off and he can wheel in. Hey, Joe, I was going to say what I was thinking is um, my aunt and uncle had this dog and the dog's back legs stopped working. Like when I was a kid, I was like, oh, shit, like he's just kind of cruising around like these dead legs kind of dragging. You know, you can picture, right, just like full on legs and cock and balls just dragging on the floor like all around. Yeah. And that's when they. I don't know, started or they figured it out that you can get these little trailers. Yeah. For, for, for I've dogs. seen them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something yeah. maybe we could all start a GoFundMe and get one for Joe. We, yeah, <laughs> we could. You could walk just around with one hands. leg. <laughs> just for one leg. He could, yeah, he could be yeah. like a, he could be like a mermaid. He would be the, he would be, he would be a leg. Joe, listen. Joe will be the new land mermaid. I would like you to get a land mermaid tattoo, Joe. It is Halloween. It, he can blend right in. Yep. You, just, you know, you go from one world to the next, but you just, you're not fully transitioned for the new world. So you still have your, you have your lungs, but you still have your mermaid tail. Like, yeah. Hey, can you guys you guess who this guy is? Out. It looks like Maurice Meyer, or it's either Ben Franklin or Maurice Meyer. I can't tell. <laughs> it's Ben Franklin. <laughs> this shit's on TV right now. What is it? I don't know. How do that's, you do it? Oh, like, like, oh. yeah, that's Curb cool. Dogs. Oh, this is. Um, this is all the stuff that he made for the Hall of Fame coronation. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. yeah, he I mean, made he made a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, like a stickers, bunch of stuff. Really cool stickers. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, good yeah. for him. Good for him. 
there's a dude who wrote a book who follows the show on Instagram. His name's Christopher Roy. He's a writer and he learned about 43 and he's been like into it for 20 some years. I don't think that he's primarily in bikes, but he asked, he's like, Hey, can you, can you introduce me to Maurice so I can ask him if he knows this one woman? So he, as like an investigative journalist, he's, he's made one of those FBI, um, uh like mob like mafia power charts and he's he's following this other woman who's been writing about 43 and there is some connection between her and maurice and he wants to get to maurice to get to her he's traced her down but now he his his way for getting to her is to talk to maurice and ask if he knows her and if he can make an introduction yeah yes and this is what the dm this is what the show dm is like it's like people constantly sending me 43s that they have it's it's awesome it's so good that it's like uh like... dj <laughs> what what i'm why why is joe laughing i'm laughing because Chad's the way Chad said, "Hey, that's an awesome story." When I'm talking about the hidden forty-three uh, mafia, <laughs> it's real. The forty-three mafia is for real. It sounds super cool. <laughs> I'm I'm utterly fascinated by it. I'm utterly fascinated by the forty-three. Like, You're not tell that we know. Do you remember when we first, when you first asked me about forty-three? <laughs> And I tried to warn you. I said, I was like, Joe, let me tell you something. You're not the type of person that should go down the rabbit hole of 43. You're like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, once, if we talk about it today, you're going to see it 10 times before you go to bed tonight. And you're like, nah, whatever. And then like the next day, you're like, it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's everywhere. It's on the news all the time. Like every time yeah. you put on the news, they're like, Here's Mary McGillicuddy and her partner, Bob Burdert Flirter, and they've lived here for 43 years. And then Dude, they're like, like, oh, over here, there's so-and-so, he's got a car, and the first time he came here was in 1943. Like, they're back-to-back, back, like 43. Dude, it's back-to-back. Back. Do you remember that um, Conan episode where he had uh, all of, like, the newscasters talking about, well, like, oh, there's so much misinformation and blah 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 and it it spreads the wrong thing but then and they were all local news reports but then they yeah. uh mosaic out and he had like 70 concurrent videos of local newscasters reading the oh. same script yeah and if and if 43s are appearing in oh, local yeah. news reports they're being written centrally yeah. Yeah, it is. What's that supposed to mean? There's one dude on staff, and no one knows what he's doing, and he's inserting 43s into all the media. Every oh, uh, okay. But yeah. all it takes is one person, one smart. Ray, would you do it, Ray? If you look, Ray, if you got a job at the public relations office of NASA, okay? Yes. Would you sneak 43s into their press releases? Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. There's just one smart ass who got somewhere and and they're they're writing like in the movie The Italian Job, Charlie Theron cracked the safe in four minutes and forty three yeah. seconds. Why? Yeah. It's just a, somebody a wrote it in. I want I want to meet these people. <laughs> Then you can adjust it, but um, and that's it. and that's why I'm you know obsessed over it. I could get this yeah. set up. All right. Okay. So, what do you think of Stony and the uh, and the wrestling? Water or anything? Oh, I um. Well, got I, think, I, I think I think Sto I think Stony yeah. and I should go on the wrestling circuit where I could be his manager and he could be the guy. <laughs> and oh, he could just wrestle. dude. That's Dude, what he you wants could to do. sell. You I, I you could be, be. Can you be Stony's agent? Well, no, I would be his manager. 
there if you ever watch wrestling back in the day i don't know if they What's have the it difference? now still i don't i i don't watch wrestling at all but when i was a kid and watched it there'd always be like the yeah. wrestler and then then there'd be the guy who was his manager and the manager would be you know wear like a pimp shirt and a cane and be yelling at the crowd and yelling at everybody else where basically wow. you, your manager would come out and 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 that's as true. people were yelling at you you would just insult them back and that's what me and Stoney want to do. You know what I mean? We're, I could just walk been, around. Ray, we've been doing this all wrong. We tried to have Vinny be your agent, but you need to be the manager. We need to find mm -hmm. someone, a BMXer, that you can manage. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what we need to do. Who would you want to manage? Would you manage Brent Moore? I don't know if I could. I don't, I think he – well – no. What about Trevor? Watson? You know, I need. I need. No, I need to manage a farcical figure, like someone just to show up, and be like, like an ice money, like just show up and never do a trick, but be like the biggest name dude. You know what I mean? Be the biggest name guy, and and he could be out with a shin injury and not be at the contest that day, <laughs> not enter the contest. <laughs> this, this is a noble pursuit. We got to well, find we, a guy who wants to be the guy and you'll be his manager. Yeah. yeah. Hey, does Chad have a, have a suggestion? We could use his friend that's in the wheelchair would probably be down oh. for it. He's a go getter. His we could be in the... He and I could go to contests and I'd be his manager. And they're like, yeah, but look, man, he's got an injury here where he, he's unable to walk. It doesn't matter. He's, he's our guy. He's the number. <laughs> he, he's the number three pro here today. Good, yeah. So that that would tell you what how good of a manager I was if we could get gigs and deals for a, a man who lost his ability to walk. <laughs> that, that's that's a manager for you. That's a true manager. Yeah. That should be the test of a manager. You get him into I, fun. Uh, okay. That would be the test of a manager. Can you make that happen? Yeah. Cool but see, but what it comes down to right now, and this in this part of my life now, the, the more the more things I can be not involved in, the happier I am. Though you know what I mean. Gotcha. Like He's, I have, even well, on my I, greatest, I feel you. even on even on my greatest day, I have very little ambition. Like I, I've never strived to be like, I got to well, be the first. I got to be the best. I got to have the most I, fun. I got to be there. Like I don't mind missing out on stuff. Like right, I just, right, right, you know right. I mean? Like there's certain That's things I want to do, and <clears throat> there's certain things I want to go to, and things that I there's yeah. things that I know that I could go to that would be fun, and that I could make them more enjoyable for my friends. That's the that's what it comes down to. I like oh, no. now if I go somewhere, I usually go for two reasons. One, yeah, I'll yeah. have fun, but I usually only have fun yeah. if I know that I'm gonna make make it fun for somebody else like my yeah. enjoyment yeah, yeah. is watching other people have fun because i'm there causing a ruckus or doing something or being able to add something to it you know what i mean yep yep so like 100 percent. yeah why would you why would you ever want to do anything else like why would you yeah. ever want to do anything so, other than yeah be someplace where uh you can add to it love you yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I decided to build them now. Okay, we'll just do that. See, like, there you go. There you go. There can be, yeah. All right. What else about the Magoo? Um, um I can't think. I am going to, I'm going to watch it again. My friend Dave, who I grew up with riding, me, him, and Gary and Warren. Dave's one of my, one of my best friends. He lives in Brooklyn now. But he comes home every once in a while. He'll be home this week, and we're going to sit down and watch the whole Magoo thing. He watched it for 20 oh, minutes yeah. and then texts me. He goes, I'm 20 minutes in. I have so many questions. When I come by this week, let's just watch the whole thing together so we can discuss it. So it'll be good watching it with somebody to talk about it while it's going on. Can you um, make a couch for it? We don't need it. We don't need a couch. Our couch for it now would be – in the living room, we got this dope, like, leather wraparound John that's got, like, cup holders and outlets and 
everything moves, that reclines, everything reclines. And our couch for it now is that with coffee and Dave likes a little chocolate. Dave needs a little oh, chocolate yeah. while watching TV. And we have a lot of chocolate around right now because Halloween's here. So we oh, have all get, the, get it, get him the, get him the good stuff. Get him like lint or Lindor. Oh, we have all, my wife's a chocolate fanatic. She has chocolate, yeah. chocolate. My wife could survive off of chocolate and cheese and Diet oh. Coke. She needs no other foods. Just the chocolate, I, uh, cheese, and Diet Coke, and she could be a bodybuilder. Was, she just like this is. I'm down. It she was about it. Thir- it was about twelve years ago today, within oh. a week or so. Oh, that um, I get a call uh, oh, oh, one sure. one morning, and it says, "Hey, you got to be in Switzerland okay. tomorrow." They probably got chocolate and there, I bet. I it was. Yeah. I went out to see Lint, that company, and yeah. uh, we had dinner with like <laughs> their marketing director, and he told us everything about the like. The business of marketing chocolate and then we went to the company store and i that was the first time i really had lint real good chocolate um oh well i've had real did, good chocolate in the past but it, it hasn't been lint. did you like, tell them did you tell them what forrest gump said <laughs> the, about life's like a box of chocolates that you never know what you're going to get well yeah. like a uh, uh, okay. if you, See, they're, they're if that's campaign, the first time you you know what? Stop a second. How great would their ad be if they reverse that? Like life, <laughs> life's like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Well, for them, we're what's it called? Lindum something? Linda who? Linda meal? Linda what? What's the name of the chocolate brand? Lint. It's fun. Lint. Price is right. Lint and Lindor. Uh, Lindor. Well, Lindor, Lindor, Lindor makes the makes the Lindor's ad could chocolate. be life. Yeah. Lindor. Lindor is they'd have to say we're not yeah. like a box of chocolate you never know where you, you know what you're going to get with Linden or Linda Moore whatever yeah. the fuck they're called do you know what I'm saying yeah. they can reverse it and make the greatest ad yeah. ever I just don't know how because, to say it. Because, because that's the thing it's like when you have like the first time you eat a new box of, cho- box of chocolates you don't know what's in it the first right. time you don't and the, and the thing about like Forrest Gump was he was always doing shit for the first time. He never yes. repeated stuff. He was always running to the next thing, or he was meeting Gerald like Ford Magoo. or whatnot. Like Magoo. Like Magoo. Like Magoo. Always running to the next <gasps> thing. So of course Magoo you don't know. Was the, Magoo was Magoo the Magoo was the Forrest Gump, Gump of BMX. Yeah, Magoo is the Forrest Gump of BMX. Yeah, he stick. He stickered five hundred. He stickered. He stickered. Think of. Think of the bikes that he touched that were kids' first, first yeah. thing, yeah. their first launch into freestyle. Magoo yeah. stickered the bike. Yeah, yeah. And what I what I was what I was really happy by was he and told was- about all the jobs he had oh. in BMX, and they were like stickering bikes. And right. so, if you were to go and ask some kid right now to go yeah. have a job, like stickering bikes but he counted how many bikes he's oh, like yeah. we're doing what 500 bikes a month or something like that uh yeah. for uh, haro 500 and, 500 for and haro, making 250 100. for no, 250 yeah, I, yeah. Just... I mean that's that's the brain of a of, that's a good brain but he got in there doing mundane stuff that's the i i think that's one of the big lessons is you were going to get great when you care about something, no matter how infinitesimally petty it may seem to someone else, but if you can crush it, like if you can stick your bike and count them, if you can uh, uh, mop, uh, clean a salon floor, uh, these, these are the mundane <laughs> jobs that 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 heighten that heighten you. But if, if but you it's can like lay, Mr. if Miyagi, you can lay. If you can lay look, on your if, back and look, have your sister in law you oil your body you... up and massage you <laughs> without getting wood. <laughs> what do you what do you place over your bag? What do you place over your bag so nothing happens? It's a, like a, it's hot, a, she- a hot water I, bottle? I have, a hot I water bottle? Under, I have my uh, underwear on and there's a yeah. sheet. So I was, I'm always you, oh. can, yeah. uh, what do you think? Listen, 
how oh. much like let me tell you this would be if you want your highest viewed podcast ever <laughs> all you need all you need to do i mean your highest one 42 seconds. highest viewed ever where you could sell sponsorship <laughs> is you need to do a back a lay down on your back massage with your sister-in-law and just me <laughs> giving commentary for the whole me giving commentary i i asked her it today be, i asked her today I, if she can would we be do amenable that? to that and she said listen i, I got I, a bench and she goes i got a bench in the road joe i will drive he can't I wait will drive to the you. eight hours joe i will drive the eight hours <laughs> to sit and watch you get a massage. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was, I, so I was talking to Allie today, which is um, okay. the other woman who's in the salon with Angie. And uh, I was telling her something. What the yeah. hell was I talking about? Anyway, uh, and I go, well, yeah, my friend Ray. And she goes, who's Ray? I'm like, well, Ray was on MTV. And she's like, what? What? And like I'm telling her this story and I was like yeah, stick your feet mentioning those little things and she's like <laughs> I can't get through the story because she's like what? What do you mean he was on MTV? I'm like well there's that show made where like and some girl wanted to do a back or want to learn BMX and so they talked to all the BMX pros and they were all like just like that's the way to do it. Just like like sacks of potatoes. No, no one would work and somebody finally broke down and said have you called Ray? And then she shows up at Ray's uh, door and you and Warren were having coffee and I'm telling her this whole thing and she's like, what? I'm in some American coffee. What? And then he was in it's store. extraordinary. It, but it took me like 10 uh, minutes to tell crazy. the simplest story because she kept getting derailed by you know, what? Why would you know she what's crazy? This? You know what's, what's crazy? That? When that When that show came out, they played it so many times. Do you know the amount of celebrities that probably watched that twenty years ago? Like, like oh, yeah. Taylor, like Taylor Swift was fourteen Taylor when Swift that came watched out. It. Taylor, Taylor and Swift. She watched, watched it a hundred percent. She watched that. I guarantee. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. She was in the music watching MTV. She was in the music. I guarantee she watched that when she was a kid ten times because it was on and every she, day. And she said, "I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to inspire people to do wonderful things with their lives." That's it. I could have that a hundred percent. You inspired Taylor Swift to encourage oh. people to follow their dreams. That's why. Yes. That's why it blew up. That's why it blew up. I believe um, so. Yeah, that's. I'm telling you. The bottom brackets are just very out. I look after I, 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 I made that meme announcing that we are no longer a coffee company. We're a sticker company. Right. And I launched that. I said, "Here's the pivot." We're a sticker company because if you try to make money in coffee, you're just trying to disrupt somebody's business. No one is going to – like generational business. No one is going to sell you good quality coffee. We couldn't – we got like the worst coffee. We got the you, – you could not make that coffee taste good. It was really bad. I'm yeah. so upset by how bad that coffee was because I gave it to a lot of people and they're just like, yeah, it's really good. I'm like, you, I tried it. It's really bad. They were being nice, but here's they were they were be they were be nobody's got good coffee. There's no good coffee company. I Ely Ely, the Italian coffee company, you know I L L Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I drink, and I drink an espresso grind, and it works in an espresso maker, but it also works in um a percolator. It works in a uh. It, it works in a French press, and yeah. I have done work for people in Italy. And I, there was this one time I was um, like, I get this, I get this, this hello. message like at five thirty. It's like, look, you you got to you 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 you, you got to talk to this guy. Um, and it was like overnight, thinking. and I was like, oh, of course I will. And I got on the phone at like seven a.m. and I helped him through some stuff. And I was like, look. You oh, yeah. make my morning awesome, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll be I'll be more than willing I, to wake up and help you out. Like when I do work for guys at the post office, I open the conversation with "Thank you for your service." Like I've done work with guys at the Air Force, I open the conversation with "Thank you for your yeah. service." 
No one's ever said you always say you always say yes to that. You always say yes to that. You always say yes to that. Anyway, yada yada yada. I got to thinking. There's Uh, no way to actually win the coffee game. No No. way to win the coffee game. Here's why. Even if you it's the number one beverage in the world. You cannot make everyone happy. There's only one way to make everyone happy in coffee, in the coffee business. And that is oh, no. that the large race sticker goes on to your favorite coffee. And Boom. then immediately you are the most loved coffee in the world. Mm-hmm. Mic drop, end of story. I just, like you said, What's Chad? this What's is, Chad? How, this think is about? how we own the coffee company. Good idea, yeah, right, Chad? Chad? I love yeah. sticker. Stuff it changes it and makes it better. Yeah, it's um, like I said, it's, hey, it's the, the new Avon. Hey Joe. Yeah. You know. How, yeah. You know how you you know how I love talking about myself and my freestyle career, right? Yeah, I do, um, and I love listening to did it. Did you Did you notice that Chris Muller said, and Magoo, but Chris Muller said he used to pay for my entry fee. He used to blah blah. blah. Magoo is the reason that I. I know. know you today. Do you know that? Magoo's the reason I know you today. Isn't that weird? Can you play, can you text him and and tell him that I am so grateful for that? No. I will he do no Magoo for that. any favor. All right. No. Fine. You don't you don't have to tell No, 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 I care, but Magoo won't care, but he'll he'll appreciate Magoo it, care. but Magoo uh, Magoo won't care. No. If okay. you told him that personally, he'd be down for it, but to text him that, you don't text him stuff like that. You know well, I, mean? I don't have his text. I don't have his. I got no, it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. But, okay. but the thing is, Magoo, Magoo saw Gary Pollock riding around, and Gary was the shit. Gary was a quiet kid, and he had a noisy, goofy friend that loved doing what Magoo loved doing. I liked going there and having a good time. And Magoo yep. saw me going to contests and having a good time. And then when he saw that good time get taken away, yeah. boom, he figured it, he figured out how can this kid still have a good time? I'm gonna enter him in a contest. I would I would have never, ever thought of entering a contest. Yep. Ever. Yep. And yep. he pushed me to go enter and I wound up making a million friends. And he yep. he's the one that introduced me to Lou and and Spike, even though I already knew Spike but didn't know it was him. That's actually pretty funny, and um, I love but, like, that story. <laughs> like, 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 but Magoo introduced me to Spike, and I was like, I think I know this dude. But Magoo introduced me to everybody. He introduced oh. me to Dave Volker. What? He Magoo yeah. was in the car. Was Magoo? On the crew we were in the Spike. Me and Walt, to do the the, and, the photo shoot. No, 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 no. It was before. It was before that. We were at the eighty six eighty six Long Joy- Island. Long yeah. Island Masters, and we, and we were walking through. We were walking through the parking lot. Me and Warren were walking the parking lot. Magoo was was selling shirts, and 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 Spike was there. And we're talking, and he goes, "Hey Ray, Warren, do, did you guys ever meet Spike?" And we're like, "Oh no, we we know who he is from Rockville." And I shook his hand. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm Ray, and or Large Ray, you know, like Magoo introduced us as Spike and Large Ray. And that's when I and that's when I looked at Spike and I was like, Warren, I think I know this dude. And then and then we didn't see him the rest of the contest. And then, a, and then, uh, so then then it was a couple of months later he went and did the the, sh- the story on, on the hoods when we were there, and, and that's when it all went down. But but Magoo, oh oh oh, I, yeah. yeah, all right, I knew the second part. I didn't know the first part. Yeah, Magoo introduced me to Spike, and then when we walked away, I said that's adam spiegel from first grade and we're like well that's impossible because his name's spike and then that's how it all went down um hey but but go ahead hit it gotta go um okay see you chad yeah have a great day see you you guys are awesome peace and chicken grease yes (laughs) enjoy the rest of your salad (laughs) yeah (laughs) yum yum (laughs) chad looks Uh, like the unabomber there <laughs> Got a lot, there lot was, of Unabomber in him. He was. I took a picture of a guy. Oh, uh, Nicholas Cage in that movie where his daughter comes looking for him, or his granddaughter does, and he's a he's an assassin. But it kind of looks every like every Nicholas Cage movie. 
right that's I, every yeah, movie in hollywood anyway so yeah uh so that story is part of the issue six the zine that i wrote did you has anyone read that to you no one's no one's reading the zine but you and maybe todd but go ahead okay okay maybe, so maybe todd is, well it that's about to change so um <laughs> it started with, i started with the idea of the protest you know the thing with the helmet like you got to keep the oh, helmet. Yeah. but then i was like i can't put i can't write the story like that because i don't i don't think that's true i think that's in there and so i was like wait a second it's not going to be a protest i'm going to pay actors to show up and dress like amish kids uh -oh. and wait in line two hours before the hall of fame opens i'm going to hire two what? more photographers they're they're on a religious pilgrimage ray to pay homage you to the wait, all so wait, eyeball helmet you won't buy you won't buy his second car but you'll pay actors and photographers to go to the hall of fame <laughs> yes <laughs> that's way better than that's way better than it's money well spent insurance. Yeah, yeah. It, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I wrote out this entire ritual for them that goes, that tells the entire story of the eyeball helmet and how it is tied to pursuit of freedom and liberty and goes all the way back to where, like the origin story of you ringing the Liberty Bell. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be a hard one for me to figure out, but even the zine won't help me, but... No, oh, well, you, I think we'll, only we'll your see. brain can figure we'll, it out. We'll see. Yeah, like I, so I, I, I'm telling the story in the zine, but um, the reason I want to have the actors outside of um, Hall of Fame is I want the videographers to capture it and tell the story of what the hell's going on because there's probably I'm probably overtelling the story, and so I need a journalist to go and tell the story like what the heck's going on and i figure if all i had to do is pay them and they're like look i'm getting paid to film this very strange performance art piece and the creative director is not even present what in the hell am i going to do here but gork gork is a character gork. not only in the zine oh boy but oh boy. i wrote i wrote gork into into the into the story and i know that gork is up for it because the last time that i was there he took the helmet out put it on bobby and that Burgess dude head, wore it. yeah and he he did a one and done it was the most awesome trick and gork was taking it back in he's like can you feel the power and he's being yeah. like on one hand it was like i know that you want people to think that you're sarcastic but i know that you're not sarcastic i know that you believe this and then when you told me the story of the all-seeing eyeball and how it was Susie Q who said, I got my eye on you. And you're like, yeah. don't try to dominate me. Like I, I, I linked that. And then to know that that was like seven hours before um, the security guard roughed you up. Like, yeah, I have, I have, I have written, I have written the origin story of the all-seeing eyeball helmet and, uh, uh, wait till you read it. Like, so wait a minute. Have Amy, have Hold Amy on. read this to you as a bedtime story. <laughs> That's no, like this. No, th I'll this is a have, bedtime have, story. No, how about I just have Elliot read it to you? I'll have Elliot <laughs> read it. <laughs> yeah, Elliot yeah, would love because, to read that. Yes, yes, I would love. Dude, I would, you would. Some, if you spent, okay. if you spent any time with Elliot, you would just piss your pants because he was he busts my balls for being bad at school like because i like i seriously like when i graduated high school i probably had i could maybe make it to fourth grade like i was so bad in school and elliot was at the kitchen table doing algebra and he was showing it to me and he goes dad do you know anything that i'm doing here and i looked at it, i go buddy this just looks like it looks like graffiti i don't know what it is he tried to explain it to me and i go wait a minute buddy now he's 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 13. I go what? I go where would you use algebra if you learn say you were the best person in the world at algebra like you could knock it out of the park knowing algebra 
what, how would this benefit you? What job could you get? And he goes, I could get a job teaching eighth grade algebra. <laughs> no, the answer is not that. The answer is you can use algebra in finance. You can use but, algebra on, on, but, on, on making but, money. That, right. But my son told me he did the large Ray version. He goes, you could get a job teaching eighth grade algebra. <laughs> I'll tell you, the only thing that works with is Marxism. The only thing that, that you can have Marxism, you, the only way to make money oh. in Marxism is is to teach Marxism. It's such a hustle. It's such a hustle. Oh, oh my God. But, um, it's so so now that, so after listening to what you were just saying there about the zine, so Susie, Susie Q and Bob Morales are the reason... I made that eyeball helmet because and Magoo. So Magoo saw me get thrown out. Susie said, I have my, we're going to keep our eye on you. Magoo goes, well, I'm going to put Ray right back into it. So Magoo, watched but how me many get contests were in between? How many contests were in between? The eyeball Three, helmet, right? There was so Florida. I got kicked out and sat up with Magoo. The mm-hmm. next contest, the next contest was, was the velodrome. But the that was the, the final. So there were, there were two in between. Um, there might have been like a Texas con. There might there. Well, no, there are five Texas. in between. There was like Texas and whatever else there was. And then I wasn't and Texas going. was the Joe Johnson. The, Texas was the Dennis McCoy and Chris Day. Like Maybe. the zoom in interview, that was yeah. I, I that is, I have yeah. a certain but, set of amazing memories in, but, in my life. Watching that was so funny to me. Okay, anyway, so keep that, going. That was so that contest. So I entered that contest, and I entered the, a couple other ones. But I did the, I popped out onto the ramp and got disqualified, and they were mad. I got yelled at. Oh, that, right. That's there's when a, you were going to do the Texas Miami con- Hopper drop-in. Right. And so I got disqualified in that contest because I used the ramp. And and they let me have it. They they told me, like, hey, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And then that's when I went and painted the eyeball on my helmet. Because then, then I knew they were picking on me. And they were like, you know what? You're just here to fuck around. And then, boom! Then I did the eyeball helmet. Yeah, that's what you're. Here and then for. went to Arizona. I went. I went to Arizona, and then we also had microwave safe stickers everywhere. Warren worked at a bakery, <laughs> and he got these <laughs> stickers that said "microwave safe." <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, like a homeboy sticker, everybody had a microwave <laughs> safe safe sticker on their shirt. <laughs> And I was scared to death that Bob Morales was going to see him. Like, we were putting him on everybody's bike and on their shirt. And then that's where I broke out the eyeball helmet. And then um, I wore the eyeball helmet in the smoke bomb run, and I cracked it when I fell because I went to ghost my bike. I was doing more shenanigans. Magoo offered me offered me a new, new bike if I launched my bike into the trophies. He wanted me to take out the trophies at – Every contest, he said, if I took out the trophies, he'd get me a brand new bike. He wanted me to. <laughs> I can't imagine what would happen if you took out the trophies. Oh, we're frozen. Oh, no. Come back, Ray. Come back, Ray. All right, Ray's coming back in. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so this all link so the the Magoo Magoo is part of the origin story of Ray. Um but 
it's like an origin story convergence because Ray has his own origin story from ringing the Liberty Bell with Spike Jones. Um, yeah, this this episode goes deep. This story goes deep while I am trying to recover. While I'm trying to recover a bruise, because here's the thing. Uh, uh, I I know how to heal my injuries. I had to learn how to heal my injuries because I couldn't afford to go to the doctor. Um, and what kind of a what would a doctor do anyway? Um, and I so I had to learn how to I had to learn how to heal my own body, and that's what I'm doing because this bruise is hema. It's I've had worse hematomas where my foot is actually filled up with blood but I got hit the same way. So this is the same hit as happened last time on my left leg. Um, yeah, yeah, it was my, it's my left leg. It was my left leg uh, at uh, One Love Jam. Massive, massive hematoma. This one's not as, this one's not as extreme, but um, it's like kryptonite. It takes your balance away. And so I can't, I can't ride. And I did, and I and I hit, and, and the reason that I have this impact is because I hesitated. It was a otherwise perfect jump, eh, maybe a little bit imperfect, but I could have saved that. I could have I could have recovered it, but instinctively I was like, no, this isn't a good one. Um, so I got to break those instincts. Um, but uh, I was having trouble. I was having trouble not hesitating after I got hit. And it wasn't because, um, I mean, I probably was getting worn down uh, anyway. And then I got hit and then my body was not responding fast enough and I interpreted that as hesitating. But it wasn't like mental hesitation. It's that I couldn't, like you have burst power with this trick and you have, you have to burst and then get there but if you lose your burst power, you can't get there in time. And the timing is all off and it seems weird. Um, but yeah, I hesitated. I went to bail out of it and it popped, pop, like it bounced and just hit right in. So anyway, commit and never hesitate because it's the hesitation that'll lead to the injury at, at, when you get to a certain level of the trick. Um, where's Ray? I think Ray's battery died. So we're just going to hang out. <laughs> oh man, I got to edit this part out. <clears throat> Maybe I'll put like a ray up there saying, wow, that's totally interesting. That's such a good, <laughs> Joe, you're so brave. <laughs> that's so, wow, Joe, that's such a cool story. <laughs> I just got to get a loop of Ray saying, wow, that is such a cool story. I love that story. And then I can just, I can just do the show on my own, tell stories, whatever, and then just have Ray compliment me. <laughs> One <laughs> of me laughing. Oh, that would be so. I think it would be mental for a person to do that. It would be funny, but for um, a regular person who's not an actor in character, like. Um, Hey. Hey. Oh, yeah. All right. So I just had this. I was imagining, like, if I can get you to say something like, oh, that's an awesome story. That's totally, that's, just, it's like the thing about that story that I find is so awesome is just like how much commitment. Like, if I could get you to say that, then I could, I could use the last five minutes when it was just me and I could put you up in the corner 
just saying, wow, that's really, that's really interesting. It's really not boring. It's such a good story as I'm just <laughs> rambling about why my bruise is uh, worthy of being uh, <laughs> nursed right now. <laughs> flatland the injury. Bruise. Like, just you calling it a flatland injury. I'm it's like, a flatland injury, but that's what it is. <laughs> like, there's, like, <laughs> you're, you are so unplywood hood right now. Wait till you see. You know like, what I mean? It, the stories do not do justice to, to, like, the brutality of the trick that I'm doing. It's, 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 Unbelievably it's brutal. Still, it's still flatland there, dude. <laughs> it's yeah, still, it's still I know, just right? Flat. I mean, you could watch Ryan Williams. Like, <laughs> Ryan Williams on a bad day, very different. Very different. I think it's so funny. Oh. All right. Did, um... So, you were talking about Magoo and the eyeball helmet and how it's all connected. And Magoo's such a good guy. Um, I forget exactly what then we were saying. Um, where did I get cut off? So, at? so where you get got cut off at was Susie Q um, kicks you out. Um, I think, and then at some point on the like next contest or whatever, Magoo signed you up. And signed me up. You so get that I... disqualified because you set up to do a Miami Hopper drop in. And right. then, and then I decided. You're like. Then I decided. I decided to put an eyeball on my helmet because they said they got my eye on you. And yeah. then the legend was born. Yeah, and now that the legend. helmet is in the BMX Hall of Fame. It's crazy. Yeah, I wonder, it really see, is. But how sad am I going to be when we go next time we go to the Hall of Fame and they're like, oh, because they rotate stuff in and out, and they just have that collecting dust behind. You know? Let me ask you a question, Ray. What happens if every 43 days, six actors or six devotees and two photographers show up in order to pay homage to, to the eyeball helmet? They'll have to, then it may just wind up getting its own case. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. What happens if it happens every 43 days like clockwork? Yeah. They have to keep it in there because then they'd be what like, Wait, happens, these people are coming here to see the helmet. What happens when Ed Helms asks to get in on one of the extras and dresses up like a uh, like an Amish guy who's and Ed reads the who's Ed who's Ed Helms the, the guy the guy who's doing the documentary for um, Eddie Kiola. Like, what if like at what point like what happens when Eddie okay. wants to get in on it? What happens when mm. Eddie wants to be one of the extras and participate in it? What happens when, like, Greg Sutherland wants to... Eddie um, wants nothing. Eddie wants nothing. Sutherland will do anything. He he he, he loves us. He's our buddy. Uh, Eddie Fiola yeah. wants nothing to do with me, you, or any of our shenanigans, though. <clears throat> Yo, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm certain. He's got a movie yeah. coming up. Yeah, He's yeah, got I mean, people. Yeah. He doesn't want... Hey, do you have... Um, is, is that... Cornflakes or leaves on your shirt? Oh, those are leaves. It's a leaf. I was underneath a tree. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little Got leaf. It. Did you see the? Did you see the video? I, or I sent you a picture of my son. I sent you. I sent you a picture yeah. of my son's. His eight. So that little that kid I was putting in and out of a car seat a couple years ago. Now he Dude. looks like he, he could be on like Notre Dame football. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. But that's the kid that told. That's the kid that told me you can only use algebra if you're going to be an eighth grade teacher. <laughs> that's what you can use algebra for. So, oh, <clears throat> is he a ball buster like in school? Yes, he yes he he roughs people up. I see him. He he roughs me up more than anybody. But um, I think he. I definitely think he has like. Well, his friends are complete, like, wise asses. Like, he's, his friends, when I look at his friends, they're, I can picture a certain kid and be like, well, that dude's like, 
how Gary was and that dude's how Scott Warner was and that kid's like how like every group of kids have the same kid you know what I mean like the kids oh, that are yeah. just like the ball busters the quiet ones the ones that's your friend but not everyone likes them but he's still your friend and but that kind of stuff but do the kids like change roles throughout their lifetime with that crew like does one dude start off as the quiet one and then has some i don't know like yeah you know they're not he gets old enough struck yet. by it's lightning cool. and then and then he becomes the ball buster yeah, yeah. Like that. they're they're not old enough yet they're just they're in eighth grade and like so be so now like from once he gets into high school next year his next three years will be where he turns into whatever maniac he's going to be mm. that's where your personality mm. really comes shining through because you experience more shit you know uh so. yes and then do your does your personality also change when you have to go out and make your own money um i would think so i mean yeah you yeah. were making your I own mean, your money personality... from a young age right well you know what's funny is when in magoo when he was talking about when he was 12 putting bikes together um, I just, I was looking at my social security benefits, like when I can start collecting and mm -hmm. I started paying in, I started paying into, um, social security when I was 13 years old, 19, 1983 is when I put, I put like a, I made a thousand bucks, but I was working. I started working when I was 12 in this, like. I started working a, a month before I was 13. I was 12 years old and I worked at a place called Best. It was like a big department store. And a friend of mine said, hey, we can start working here. Um, it was like around like, I guess it was around Christmas is when it was. Um, and they'll pay you, your, it's, it's three bucks an hour and you can work as much as you want. And you just got to tell them you're 18 because they don't hire anybody that's, that's, you have to be 18 or older. So I was 12 and my friend was 13 and we, we got dressed up. Like he put on a, a shirt and tie and I, I tried to dress up. I didn't have any clothes, but I, I put on, he gave me, he gave me one of his dad's shirts and I buttoned it up and we went in and filled out applications. And we told him we were students at Villanova. <laughs> Stop laughing so I can finish my story. Okay. So tell me when you're done. So he we both he put on a shirt and tie. I put on one of his dad's shirts. And we um we went and filled out applications. We didn't and we didn't need that because we didn't even really see anybody. We just put the applications in to some lady and then we both got a call that that day and they said you hit. Uh, come come back in and they, they, like come back in to start working like they didn't even interview us we just went right to the warehouse and started working and I was 12 I was 12 <laughs> is that crazy like and my dad let me do it my dad was just like my dad was I I remember telling my dad I'm like hey me and Davey Moore got jobs at best and he's like doing what I'm like we're we're in the warehouse and he goes how did you get a job working there and I said, we just lied and said we were 18. He goes, I don't know if you can do that. And um, and I think what I did too is I put a, I put a social security number. And then like, oh, um, wait. like four, four months later, they were like, hey, your social, your social doesn't match up with anything. And then I, then I went on the books. But so when I was 13, I was then getting paid with my social security number on there. And, but I have documentation of me working and putting into social security when I was 13 years old, which is illegal, I'm sure, but it's on there. It's, it's funny that the government did not um, deny accepting your social security contributions as yeah. a 13 year old. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it says it right on the thing. So like 13, 13, 14 and 15, I made like thousands of dollars working and I was a little kid. Yeah. I wonder if that's going to come back when I, 
I, you know, what's funny is I wonder if they'll be like, Hey, you can, re you can start collecting earlier because this says that you were like, whatever age, you know, like it would be illegal. I mean, it's, Ill it's illegal for the United States. I think that who gets in trouble? Me or them? No, they would have to get in trouble. It couldn't be you. How can you, how can you get in trouble as a 12 year old who doesn't have, like, you can't legally consent to anything. Uh, and so how can the government uh, enroll you in some program where they're capturing um, tax on your labor? It's the, it's the, yeah. the government. Like maybe you can find a, maybe you can find an attorney and, and have some fun with that. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So Magoo was saying he was 12 and putting bikes together. And, um, and I, and I think back then, I mean, a lot of people did that. I'm sure like kids, like when I was a kid, if you wanted something like, I mean, like my son, if he wants a new Xbox, he just puts it on his list for his birthday or Christmas and right. he gets it. Yeah. If I wanted, if I wanted tough wheels, I had to work somewhere because I couldn't go, hey, dad, I need 75 bucks for these wheels that are going to break right. on the first rock walk. <laughs> you had to either <laughs> buy them or wait for Gary to get a set from Magoo <laughs> and get him out of his garage. <laughs> oh my I God. wish I had video of when Gar when the bike box would show up at Gary's house and we would get in line. I don't... I, picture it being the same as when Mark Eaton was in jail and they put food down in a box. <laughs> the big guys got the good stuff and then the little guys got like the cheese stick wrapped in paper. Like, and that's what it was like at Gary's house. Like the bike box would show up and Gary would be like, all right, cool. I need these bars, <laughs> these Chrome 48 wheels. And then, and then, and then we would, then Gary's like, whatever else is in the box you guys can have. And then we're like, okay, we got a DK stem. We got two pairs of grips, a pair of Pacific Palms, a bunch of stickers, and then I'd pull like a, I'd pull out a small shirt and go, I can't wear this, and then give it to Dave Pack. But that's um, what these yeah, influencers that, that, get these days. Yeah, when Gary would get that box from Magoo, um, and then it got even better when he got on GT. Yeah. It was like going from like Ponderosa to like Ruth Chris, like it was like. Now we get the real good <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? Then when the box showed up, we're like power series cranks and some more Chrome 48. And like, this is like, then the real good stuff started coming. But what a good gig, yeah. man. What a good yeah, gig. Those were the days. Yeah, Speaking so... of good gigs, no one has, no one has a better gig than Shuggy Bear just kicking it on the couch. That's what she does all day. That's... Shuggy Bear. Hello, baby girl. Oh, I'm sure she's stoked. Theodore's um, just chilling Theodore. out. He, yeah, I think he had like he was he had he was feeling grumpy the past couple of days, but now he's he's chill again. These these cats. Uh, so I bonded with Theodore um, when he was a little kitten, and now he's my he's my homie and he'll just want to crawl up in my lap and so i'll 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 I, i'll be talking to clients and a little uh -oh. white claw will come a little paw comes up. out yeah and they actually love it they go bananas when they see that little paw so yeah I, he he gets he gets on my lap because um it's like uh uh, like if a shrink has a a really uh, emotionally supportive animal, when they're talking to their patients, the animal calls calms them yeah. down. Theodore has the exact same thing because people. Oh, I mean, yeah. like when I when I do when I do interviews with people, like they're, I, I get them into a state where they can tell me the truth, but also brag about it so that I get all the details, and that helps me figure out like what the heck's really going on. Um, but other times people will call and they're like, I got to talk to my boss and I got to know, I, I got to know this topic really good right now. 
or it's like, I just got my job and I got 90 days or they're going to give the job to someone else. I need you to tell me oh. right now what I need to do. And I'm like, oh. lay it on me. Where are you at? And then I'll go and pull research for them and I'll give them little stories and um, like metaphors or analogies to use and then send them on their way. But yeah, oh. like, and so you can imagine if somebody's calling an analyst uh, and they need that kind of advice for their high paying job to have a little cat, you know, like they're talking to someone who has some humanity and it's a cute little cat. And so they just, yeah. I just keep doing it because it sets them at ease. And that's, that's what so you, you got you to get. You, you have an emotional support cat. I, what I tell, what I tell them is that I am his emotional support human. And so sometimes he'll oh. need to be on my lap. And so that's, and, I, and so I comfort him. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's like, like I told this one, I was, I was, I was, uh, I, uh, I, I published a case study and then someone licensed it and they're like promoting it now. And I was taught, and it, it turns out that I did a case study on this company and this other big financial company did a case study on the same one. And I was talking to their, 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 their sales leaders and they were asking me like why he, what made it so successful and i told him a story uh and i was like well you know how like as a college student i was i was the only college student who ran out of money and so the payment card decline would work one way anyway these guys start laughing and i'm like i know it is the funniest thing i am the only person who ran out of money in college and i'm totally embarrassed and every time i tell that story people laugh at me but the joke is everyone runs out of money in college. Like everyone runs out of money in college. And um, yeah, it is a, an awkward situation where you're like trying to fix the payment card. So then we started talking about payment technology based on like that little anecdote. But those are the types of stories that I, that I end up telling while when you ran out of money. When when you ran out of money, you could have just put an umbrella up your ass for pocket change like Magoo did. You know, some people had different options than I had. I was yeah. I was probably lacking creativity. I was lacking the creativity <clears throat> to, to do what Magoo did for <clears throat> for money. Who would pay? I mean, who would pay someone to put an umbrella up their ass? Uh, uh Seppi and Magoo. Where are you going, buddy? Okay. Uh oh. Elliot's going out on the bike. Going out on the e-bike. Oh, he goes. let's talk it. about the e-bike. Let's talk about the e-bike. Magoo said. I know everything about the e-bike. Magoo said the e the e-bike was invented at the same time COVID was. Yes, that's not invented. true because I had my e-bike five years ago. Invented. The marketing scheme was invented. Magoo said that yeah. COVID was invented to sell batteries. Was that your takeaway? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I know that everyone went out and bought bikes when COVID hit. I remember you couldn't buy a bike at a bike shop because they were all gone. Yeah, but yeah. e-bikes, I mean, e-bikes, like the, my e-bike, you have to pedal it. There's no throttle. But mm -hmm. So the one that Elliot's out on right now, you have to pedal it for it to move. But his friends got the four hundred dollar foldable Costco one. There's like seven of those out there with his friends, and they like ride around like it's a Beastie Boys video. But Elliot's <laughs> got like the full suspension, like mountain bike John. He's got the big, the big John. And well, he, um, he he does. He has a father who knows that you don't buy bikes from department stores. Hard step and the story. Yeah. That is true. That is true. That is, it's funny too. Yeah. Cause Elliot's got like, like he's got, well, and it's my, it's, Hey, is new Dave out there? I don't know who's out there. Is it the what? government? Hey, you guys. They'll bark at a, There's a lady on a walker that goes by and they bark at her. Oh, okay. But um, you got to watch out for the lady, the old ladies on the fake walkers. 
that's the other thing you got to watch out watch out for. Yeah, they'll, they'll come get you. But yeah, all that stuff Magoo was saying about <laughs> about the e-bikes was good, you know. All that stuff was uh <laughs> What are you What are you laughing at? What What What's made you? I'm I'm, I'm 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 laugh I'm laughing that I just said you gotta watch out for the fake old ladies on the fake walkers. But why is that a fake walker? <laughs> so like these guys are because they're, they're actually that, 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 that's them. how they spy that's how they spy on people. I mean it's I I made up oh. a ridiculous conspiracy theory that was completely unfounded. Oh, it's like eighty some. Oh yeah. Oh, that's what they're barking at. They're barking at, at Elliot's friend. They're jaywalkers. He's on a bike. They're well, Elliot won't cross. We live on a busy street here, so Elliot gets on the bike there because the bike's fifty, sixty pounds. So now oh. I don't know how well you can see him on there. Can you see it at all? If I'm pointing it. Yeah, I can. I can see what's going on. So now he's taking off with his friend. So his friend's got a real pedal bike. Magoo's all psyched on that. His friend's got a pedal bike. I think Dion's the quarterback on his team. That's who's here, Good. I believe. Good. They kick it. Good. They play football together. They ride bikes together. He's got a cool crew. He's got a he's got a better crew than I did at that age. You know what I mean? He's got a diverse crew of kids that they do everything together. They ride bikes together. They play sports together. They eat lunch together at school. They do all sports. It's pretty awesome. Well, he's properly socialized. It's really hard to have parents he is. Uh, that can socialize a kid. Yeah. No, he's socialized all right. See, Magoo, Magoo, Magoo showed you the light, and you yeah. had a kid who was socialized. So Magoo is, I wonder, is going down through the generations. I wonder how much stuff carried on from when we were kids hanging out with people like Magoo. You know what I mean? Like Magoo oh, directing forget about us it. On, like, on stuff to do. Like, you know what I mean? There's probably so man. much stuff. There's probably so much stuff that he did that we watched him do yep. and stuff that he told us to do and made us yep. do that probably carried on to our adult lives and we don't even yep. know it, you know? 100%. Like, there's a portion in my... Um, in my three zine uh, accompanying like story about why I'm doing this project, where I just said, look, BMX has masters, hard stop. BMX has masters. And if you can find those masters at a young age, they can change for the better the, 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 the direction of your life. I was telling during my massage today, I was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was telling Aaron that, like I did not come from like I am not the product of education. I am not the product of education. Like my educational history yeah. is spotty all over. But what I am the product of is Master Sung Ho Kim, uh, the Taekwondo master. He is the one who taught me over a course of five years what I needed to uh, take care of myself. He he is my Mickey. He is my Mickey. He My taught Mickey. me all of this and Mickey, everything else. Like Mickey Conti or Mickey, Mickey, the boxer, Mickey, the boxer. Okay. <laughs> that was a joke, but good. <laughs> the fact that her name was Mickey and she yeah. played the role of a mentor or like the, cause yep. if you, the, the, the and hero they, story. And they both, the, the and they both died at the end. And they both, and died, they both at the died at end, but a different way. Oh my goodness! She called us back. Yeah, or she I called me think, back. I'll I'll tell you this: if she did a podcast with that dude, it'd be viewed as much as Magoo's, because oh, yeah. she is still a she's still mysterious. And who wouldn't want to sit down and listen to Mickey explain why she? how she was able to and 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 he br and magoo brought it up on the on his interview she got the be it'd be like going to michael jordan in the prime of his career right. and saying hey we want to take you out of the nba and we're going to send you over to chile to play basketball and you're going to make yep. all this money that's yep. what they did like they they promised they promised dennis all like 
Dennis would be, dude, if you could get Dennis on that unclick thing, would be great. Like, you, like, why do they not have Dennis on there? Dennis, Dennis's hey, would be better I had than a, Magoo's. I had a thought about that. I had a thought about that. I know that he doesn't like the Zoom thing, but you know how I called yeah. Eddie the other day and he was on my phone? Could you do, like, I, you, you, you'd have to have a computer. So if you have a, if you have a laptop computer, you would have to do that on Zoom. And then could you call Dennis and put him on speaker and then add him to the show by speaker? Well, all you got to do is just get one of his friends that's not afraid of, like, that they're – he has a friend, Woody. If we can get a hold of Woody, Woody's a really cool dude. And if we could just get Woody to be like, here, use my phone, you know? Yeah. And why have to show do, it – ha- and we, we, we just got to uh, – I'll get Warren involved in it. Warren might have Woody's contact information. Okay. Because we could contact somebody that knows that rides with Dennis and just be like, hey, because I mean, Dennis would be, dude, Dennis's shit would be great. If you did a, if you did a factor freestyle with Dennis and mm-hmm. just did it one on one, it'd be, it'd be tons, it'd, everybody would watch it. Well, it'd be awesome because I think it should be like you and um, Warren and, uh, Gary, me, Warren, and, Dennis, like, Gary, and whoever else. Yeah, like all the guys who beat Johnson. Up Johnson would be good. Yeah, all the guys who beat up Dennis we, when he owed you money. Him. When you if you would have been there, if you would have been there when we mugged him and his, his friends, his friends were like reluctant to jump in because he was being he was being beat up by like me, Gary and Warren. And they were like, but wait a minute. These guys, like Dennis is our boy, but these guys beating him up are his friends too. And they didn't know what to do. And the, the extracting his wallet from his bad hip and just taking his money out and just a full beat down and mugging of Dennis at Woodward, like the most decorated pro in the sport. And we just left him in a pile of filth with, Seven dollars and a crooked wallet, <laughs> and then we gave the money right back to him. We didn't even. We just had to prove a point that we could beat him up. Like, see, that's the other thing too. Oh, yeah. Why I think why that's why I think a lot of a lot of like big game pros always like hung out, like let me hang out with them and do stuff is because I made them normal. I made them like everybody else yeah. because I didn't care. Yeah. Like. Like I'd sit there and and beat up Dennis or I'd make fun of Martin or I'd pick on Eddie. Like, you know, like I have no street cred to be like being able to do that, but they all just let me get away with it. You know, it's gotta be a lonely life when all you have around you are fans. People that are like, well, that's when we went, when we would go to Dave Mirror's house, we would go to Dave Mirror's house and people would, just it's Dave Mirror. So anything he said would be funny. Anything he said that was ridiculous, you just agreed with it because you had to. And oh, I'd go God, in there dude. and make fun of his I'd make fun of his <laughs> bald head and his dead tooth and his <laughs> shitty cars. And I'd rip on him and everybody'd just be looking at me. And Dave and I'd be like fighting back and forth. And he'd be like, Who is who's this fat dude from Pennsylvania giving Dave the business? But Dave's not Dave's just taking it. You know what I mean? Because like you got you gotta you gotta rough these people it, up. Every like dude, every, yeah. nobody is high and mighty. Like no, everybody's the same. Everybody everybody takes a shit. Yep. Everybody bruises their shin. Everybody's got <laughs> problems. Like everybody's the same. Like all these pe- all these superstars, people, you know, people yeah. will videotape Brad Pitt eating a sandwich. Like who cares yeah. if he's eating a sandwich? Yeah. Like, let, him, guys, leave, God, let him eat let him do goddamn sandwich. everybody's everybody's the same they just he's on tv or this guy does this guy's a great bmxer but we're all the same dude oh some God, people are just more so popular funny. than others or make a little more money than others but yeah it's got to be oh. so lonely to not be able to then like i think there's a danger too like when you have a bunch of yes people around you 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 stop yeah. being able to recognize a good move from a not good move. And that is, Yeah, everyone's gonna tell you whatever that, you're doing is great. Yeah, and like you're gonna you're gonna 
fuck up because you like the world the world will give you feedback about whether your idea is good or not or whether you refined your idea or if if your if your idea is good but you should be putting more work into it it's like and if you don't have that there it's they can ju- it it can be very dangerous for you yeah well that's it like that very thing, dangerous that's like when i've told the story like a million times but the one where dave had the dave mirror super tour and the last show he wasn't going to go to because he was tired and he was going to go home and everyone was just like okay dave see you later you know have a good day and nobody everyone was just letting dave leave and go home and I, and i got in his face i didn't i mean it wasn't like a confrontation but i i was the only person it wasn't that i had the balls but i was the only one that that knew that dave had to go on that had to finish that last show because people were going to go to that tour they were going to exactly. drive to that you know drive to new jersey they're going to you know there was there was going to be a dad with with four kids his his son and three kids from the neighborhood that were going to go see Dave Mira and they were going to get there and they were going to watch you know Nyquist John and, Peterson and um, Nastasio yeah walk off and do a, and and they're awesome riders but they weren't Dave Mira and Dave wasn't going to do that because he was tired it's like dude you signed up for this man literally signed, up, signed for up for this for it. your name's on the bus and then he went and did the thing and then. 10 years later Eaton was doing interviews for NBC and he had all these guys that were like the number one street riders and they're like what was your first taste of like BMX or like well at our local skate park the Dave Muir Super Tour when Dave Muir came off that bus it changed my life and right there I was like I got goosebumps I was like holy yeah. shit I'm like I yeah. I did something that made a difference I felt like I that was like my first like adult moment at like age fucking 38. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I'm like, I gave Dave advice. He took it and it helped people. I like still to this day, that's one of my most favorite things that I did was getting what Dave was the to advice? get on that bus. What was the advice? The advice was follow your commitment. If you said you yeah. do, you're going to do it, do it. You got people uh, uh, expecting this. You got people impassioned. You got people on a journey because of your story. You owe them. Yeah. Do it. And you're tired. Also, I don't give a shit. Exactly. Well, that's the thing is he was just he was just beat. He he said I'm over it. I'm over. that's what he just kept saying. I'm over it, Ray. I'm over it, Ray. And I was like, Yeah, yeah you're I mean, you got to say it in a different you, way. You, you got to finish it. You got to you got to finish, finish this. It. Though you got to finish it. Yeah. And I'm so I'm so glad he did, but you're enforcing um, the code. You're enforcing the yeah. code. Like good people live by a code, and you just have like your friend. It it can get really tiring, but like <coughs> I mean, Todd and I, Todd and I do this stuff back and forth. We talk about people who either they're cheating or um, they're 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 lying, and it's just like you can't do that, man. You just you cannot do that. We don't let anyone off the hook, and that's the rule. You don't let anyone off the hook. You don't have to be mean about it, but you can't. Like if somebody made up, a, like if somebody made up a story, if somebody made like up about, a story about you doing something filthy, and then they kept telling people about it, but it was all for made thirty up. years. Yeah, for, for thirty years, and then they never. And then, like, came if back you had, like, hey Ray, sorry, yeah. I made up that story. Yeah, I know. Then if you had a friend who, like, you watched your friend uh, confront that other friend. And you were like, okay, well, that kind of settled the, the score. But then, like, you make a podcast episode where you write your other friend's apology. And you, you and they you never read it. A, and they never they read, never it. read but, it. But everyone who watched knows that he approved a written apology. I became he didn't James McGraw's. He apology. I, I sent it to Do you know, him. The, I the said, James well, know. Does James know that if he just went up to me, walked up to me and just said, hey, Ray, what's up? Hey, you know what? Sorry that I was confused about that story and that um, I hope you're not, you know, like hope I didn't 
get you too mad or or if he just said hey i'm sorry i, I hey ray i'm sorry i screwed up but I'd be here's totally the magic I, I, of course you would but because here's the magic when he does that it will fix so many things in his life yeah. Hard, yeah. hard stuff it's like magic like I'm not, and I'm not even kidding. When I did that thing, when I saw, when I had that insight about, wait a second, it's not about selling coffee. It's about putting large Ray sticker on your favorite coffee. And we're not going to make any money off of the world's most loved coffee, which is perfect, which is exactly what you said. You make, you put the free and freestyle. Free when I thought. had that thought, when I had that, when I had that thought, I made that meme. I launched it. I called my Uber. My Uber announcement was Uber. David, five stars, zero minutes away. And I was like, that's the perfect Uber. I posted that meme and I got David, five stars, zero minutes away. And the kid rolls up and he's playing He's playing a Christian rock or a Christian song that's called. Um, it's called I Know Todd Carter. It's no, it's like the king is on the way. I'm not a big and Christian I was like, rock fan. Yeah, I mean, I, I never I didn't listen to it, but he, the kid had it on in the car and he was a nice he was a nice enough kid and he was just playing it very happily. And it's like that and. and that video that I sent you, you could hear it in the background. The King is on the way. That was the song. And I just took a picture of it. And I was like, All I right, heard, well, I was listening to that. I thought it said the shin is on its way. I the shin is it. on its, yeah. Well, when yeah. I first heard it, I said that your shin is on its way. And I was like, oh, my new shin is coming. I better get home to pick up the Amazon box for my new shin. Yes. But like uh, Dale that, Mc... those types of coincidences will happen. Dale Mitzel once had a cut on his shin that turned into a festering wound and a boil, and it was so prominent on his leg that the rest of his friends named it Glenn. His wound had a name, Glenn, because it wouldn't heal. It was like five months, and he still had this like boil on his shin, and, oh. and they they gave it a name. So you're yeah, not at that shin, point yet. Shin, shin injuries can be bad. I remember Bronco telling me about some dude who had a shin injury and he didn't take care of it and it got gangrenous. But Bronco was a rough dude. Do you, did you know Bronco? Nope. Don't even know who he is. Bronco, I know Joe Johnson knows him. Um, and I think we were talking about it on that episode. Um, but Bronco was from Puerto Rico uh born in puerto rico lived in new york city and he was one of the ramp instructors at woodward hmm. i don't know yeah oh Ooh. let's talk about the ramp up the yawn yawn contest did you see ryan no fudger yawning i saw him yawn while i was watching i was cracking up because i was like you're yeah. gonna see this he let out a big yawn if i remember he let, he let out such a big yawn. I paused. I took a picture of it and I made an internet contest and posted it. And you DM guys yawning on podcasts and whoever sends the best one and you can, you'll be the judge. Uh, they're going to get like a trophy, a year end trophy. And okay. so everybody yawns on podcasts. Yeah, they do. But when, so you want to see who has the best one. The, who can find the Man, best podcast? I think on? My, my money's on me. I think. I think I, I've done some good ones, right? <laughs> when you, when you said, guys, look, I can't believe none of you, neither of you, have figured out that you should put a um, a, a lion roaring. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. And I did. Oh, I did. It was yeah. so funny. It's so funny. And oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there. So now, hopefully, well, if, if people love Ramp Up the Yawn as much as I love Ramp Up the Yawn, we're going to have lots of yawning podcasts. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yawning right now. I'm falling asleep. <clears throat> Mike Daly loves this idea, by the way. He he loves to wrap up the yawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were texting earlier oh. today. All right. Hey, oh, thanks boy. for getting on for a ten minute podcast to catch up on the go. Yeah, the ten minute podcast was long as hell. I went outdoor and indoor on this one. Um, yeah. Hey, good luck with your shin. Suck it up and walk around a little bit today. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm gonna you watch the Rocky movie. Bag. I'm gonna wa- I'm gonna watch all the this is yeah. all the Rockies. I'm gonna watch yeah. all the Rockies. I got distracted. Make, I got distracted. You know, you know what you should do? Huh? You should call your dad and and record the phone conversation. Just go, hey dad, I'm laid up in bed. I have a shin injury from my bicycle, and I want to hear your dad's reaction. As he was Green Beret in, in Vietnam, carrying a soldier across enemy lines while shooting people, and you're in his son's in bed with a shin injury. He texted. Come me on, Joe. Because I, because I, 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 I made the. He texted me. Uh, the other day because I put the still footage of me, like landing, like when I caught the bike mid air, because that's how you do it. You have to oh. catch it mid air. And he's yeah. like, he's like, I've never seen anything. He's, he was telling me about, anyway, he said something very nice about, uh, he's like, I, I don't know how you can pull yourself to dedicate that much attention to that difficult of a thing. And I was like, dope. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld had a big thing on that about skateboarding. Did you ever hear about that? I, I love that one. I love it. I Where love it so talks much. about like how dedicated skateboarders are. He's trying like, a skateboard trick, kids. Trying it. You're fine. They're they're gonna be fine in life. Yep. Crazy. Anyway, All right, buddy. What well, we're gonna end it there. Good luck with your shin. Have a <laughs> lovely week. And uh, I guess we're gonna start a GoFundMe to get you a second car. This is killing me. This one, the most, all the all the stuff that you've told me today, the most disturbing thing is that you only have one car now. That's the thing that that not disturbing. That's the thing that bugs me the most. That bugs me the most. We, maybe for we when get, you're going to be like, we got to get a car sponsor. Yeah. You're, well, you're going to be like one of these days, and he's going to be somewhere for the day, and you're going to want to go somewhere kind of far, and you'll be like. Well, an Uber is going to call. I just, I can't go. I don't have a car. Like you're going to be a grown man stuck at your house because you don't have a car, and all you have is your bad shin. You might have to get an e-bike. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go while you're laughing. All right, all right. Love, love peace, peace and chicken grease. Love peace and chicken grease. Peace out. See you later.